Are unexpected breakdowns leaving you stranded in the field? Don't let downtime hinder your harvest. Advanced Diesel Repair is your trusted partner in getting you back in action fast. Their technicians specialize in swift diagnostics and top-notch repairs, ensuring your diesel equipment is up and running in no time. With Advanced Diesel Repair, you can count on reliable service and minimal disruptions to your farming operation. Advanced Diesel Repair, conveniently located off the I-94 Wild Rice exit and online at ADRofHorace.com. Broadcasting live from the Miller High Life Studio, this is the Jay Thomas Show on WDAY. Thanks ever so much. Usually I just the bail right before you start. Your opinions Jay. of the host, yeah. participating callers, listener emails, and or letters, and are not necessarily the opinions of WDAY or Forum Communications. WDAY 970 AM and 93.1 FM invite you to make your opinion known. We pride ourselves on exploring all viewpoints on any topic. Do you know who I am? I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People know me. I'm very happy for you. Jay Thomas Show, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Six minutes after two o'clock, and uh, well, this is the spring-summer weather outlook, the LRC weather outlook, and uh, we do this a couple times a year, and oh, he's back. Man, that is a red shirt, dude. (laughs) <laughs> no, we're not. What are you uh, working yeah. EMS today or what? Look at Gary Lezak, well, man, he is flying the red. Official. Yeah, wow. see the other twenty twenty. All right, so welcome to the program seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. Email studio at wdayradionow.com. dot com and uh, hanging out, of course, Gary Lezak, the founder of the LRC. Our chief meteorologist Dean Wysocki is with me. Meteorologist Dustin. Uh, Justin Storm is with me, uh, and uh, also our ag director, the very lovely and talented, Bridget Riedel is hanging out. Howdy, kids. Because this uh, this outlook has a very, oh, it's very important to uh, to the ag industry. Absolutely, because right now we've looked at a quite open winter. Where are we going to be at when it comes to um, moisture content? When will we see the big storms? We can plan some planting and spray dates around that. Affects hang season and late calvers. Okay, and mm-hmm. why why is Dean and Justin here? We really don't need them. We got Gary. <laughs> this is true. Good point. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys can uh, you guys can go. How you how you been? Uh, how you been, Gary? I'm doing great, and and Justin and Dean are LRC certified meteorologists. I, you know, I I, I, so. I see I see the certificates. They had them blowing up. They're hanging on the wall. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to hang them downstairs in the lobby. You know, with with their pictures next to them. But yeah, they are now they, they are now certified, right? Well, they've always been yeah, certified. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> certifiable. All right, uh, uh, but what are we doing today, man? We are going to have a lot of fun, Dean. We're going to talk about the LRC, uh, new developments. Uh, I've been working relentlessly. Our Weather 2020 team is growing. uh, And you guys are about to have a major snowstorm. And I'm sure Jay Thomas is excited about that. I am because I'm leaving uh, tomorrow morning for Florida for a week. I'm out of here, baby. (laughs) Are you serious? Well, yes, I'm out of here, but here's the problem, because I know my son will not move the snow, so when I get back, I, I will be snow blowing on Good Friday. Oh, oh, oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Well, It'll melt it's, by great. Then. it's great to be here. I wish. Yeah. So, so Gary, for um, any of our new listeners that aren't familiar with the LRC, uh, quickly go over exactly what is the LRC. It's, it's uh, you know, no other I've had, I don't know how many people tell me or ask me, how come no other meteorologists in our area use the LRC? What exactly is the LRC for people that don't know? You know, a lot of people may be hearing about this for the first time. It is a new technology, even though I've been working on it for 35 plus years. So it's a, a long, long road for when you discover something like uh, what we are going to share with your your listeners and, and watchers of YouTube and Facebook Live and whatever. But uh, let me just tell you, it is something and you guys are all in on a secret. Justin knows, Dean knows, Jay Thomas, I think, knows. And Bridget uh, certainly knows, and uh, it's a secret that the weather pattern is cycling above us. There's a river of air above us that is cycling regularly. And what most meteorologists and scientists think is just chaos, it's actually the exact opposite. And it's important to, to make that point. 
in, in technology and in the world, a lot of times people think the opposite is true. And, and, and this is one of those examples. So it is completely ordered. There are four core principles to the LRC. A unique weather pattern sets up every fall. So between October 1st and November 30th, a brand new weather pattern that's never happened before. And believe me, you're experiencing a pattern that has never happened before. What a winter you guys have had so far. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's the first principle of the LRC. Principle number two, there is a river of air above us within the troposphere, and that is cycling regularly. It's both in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. The southern hemisphere is a different cycle. They may have some interaction, but there's a different pattern in the north and the south. 90% of the world lives in the northern hemisphere, believe it or not. Anchor troughs, where storm systems are more frequent and stronger, and anchor ridges, where storm systems are less frequent and weaker, develop in the fall, and they continue through the winter. So when storm systems start intensifying certain points, they will continue to do that all the way into the summer. Okay, so this is going to allow us to make forecasts. And most importantly, a cycle length develops and evolves. And this year, the weather pattern is cycling six to seven weeks, somewhere in that range. And it allows us to predict the weather. So that's the core, four core principles of what the LRC is. And as you guys have experienced, and Justin and Dean, I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. But the LRC is the only way, the only known method in the world to know when and where a winter storm will be, like the one approaching you, when and where a hurricane will develop, when and where a, a severe weather outbreak is going to happen, droughts will be shrinking or, 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 or expanding. So it's the only method known. And right now, that's the introduction to what the LRC is. And as, as usual, as we start the show today, and, I, and I'd love to get some calls and questions from people later, but uh, Bridget's experienced this now for three plus years, I think. Dean and Justin, you guys learned about it. And you know this storm coming our way, uh, predicted 90 days ago. Think about that. The storm you guys are about to experience is a prediction from 90 days ago, I, if not 140 days. I, I checked out I would, uh, before I got on the air, Gary. Uh, I went uh, back through uh, uh, the papers when we did the uh, fall winter outlook because I write all that down, went through, took a look, and in on my paperwork, it says March 19th, major, major storm. Yes. So we're, it's, it's, it's right in there, man. It's crazy. Yeah, and, and this wow. is yeah, this is the same storm that hit us right before Christmas. I think it was Christmas Eve. We had mm -hmm. Christmas Eve and Christmas. We Day. had a major ice storm just to the west of the valley. We had mm -hmm. up, up to one to three inches of rain here in the valley. So extra. It, since we're on a and, we're on a go ahead. And when I checked the paperwork uh -huh. on my paperwork, that was it says uh, right around the Christmas time, warm rain or freezing rain, big storm. Yep, and so. Yeah. Since we're on a, and each year of the LRC, the cycle length is different. This year, as Gary said, it's about 45, 46 days. Well, that Christmas storm, extrapolate 90 days from that. It falls right on this weekend. It's, it's unbelievable. It's <laughs> it, it is crazy. Hey, uh, a listener, by the way, uh, you can, you can, of course, listen to us on 970 WDAY, uh, 93.1 FM here locally. Of course, worldwide uh, on demand anytime, anywhere on the marble, WDAYradionow.com or your smart speaker. And also, you can go to our YouTube page, YouTube channel, uh, and watch the show, and you'll see all the graphics. If you go there, you, you're going to hear what you're hearing on the radio, but you're also going to see all the graphics uh, uh, put together. You'll see all of us. Uh, you go to WDAY 970 AM, and make sure you subscribe. Uh, you don't have to subscribe to watch, but we, we like you do. Subscribe, hit that bell, and then you'll get notifications when we put new stuff up on our YouTube page. And we got a chat room going in there as well. You can either you can either call us at 701-293-9000, or you can email us, studio at WDAYradionow.com, or you can get into our live chat and pose your questions there. And, and Gary already won for you. Uh, says, uh, Gary, so with El Nino weakening and potentially moving into La Nina, how does that affect the LRC later on this year? 
Well, later on this year, uh, when you if you think of the year, then by September, I'm going to take it literally. So by October and November, a brand new LRC will set up and La Nina will be developing. So that that question, what we are currently in a strong El Nino that is weakening rapidly. So the strong La Nina is likely by next fall. And you can see on the graphic there, it was red along the equator. The black dashed line down the middle of that picture is the equator, just so you to get your bearings. It's hard for me to even comprehend this graphic sometimes. But see all the blue on the right. That's September, October, and November. By this fall, a strong La Nina is expected to develop. And this could be a problem for next winter as El Nino and La Nina, what's called La Nina, which is called El Nino Southern Oscillation Index. That is an influence on the LRC. However, this will be a perfect point to explain why the LRC is the centerpiece of the big atmospheric jigsaw. It's a big puzzle up there. The LRC is cycling every six to seven weeks. As Dean said, centered maybe on about 45, 46 days. It's oscillating. It's a river up there. We're going from an El Nino to a La Nina during this LRC. That will have an influence, but guess what? The cycle will not change. So it's only an influence. What is that influence? Possibly an increased number of hurricanes this summer over the Atlantic. You're going to hear all these forecasts come out. Uh, we have our forecast coming out for hurricane season coming soon. And for North Dakota and your surrounding area, small influences, okay? It's still going to be this year's pattern that's cycling until the next LRC sets up. Uh, 701-293-9000, email studio at WDAYradionow.com. And as uh, emails come in and you're asking about certain dates and what the weather's going to be like, we'll get to those. Uh, so you're just going to have to hang with us. We're not going to do those right this second, but we will do those here uh, later on in the program. If there's a specific date or, hey, man, on this date, I'm going to be here. You can get those to us. I will try to get them answered. If you got a weather question, we'll take those at any time. 701-293-9000. Email studio at WDAYradionow.com. Um, also, uh, we're going to go through, you guys are going to go through the 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 actual spring summer outlook correct we're going to find out what we'll, what it has to hold yep, for us we'll go we'll go month by month uh we can break it down week by week uh we'll give yeah rainfall when when will the wet periods be when will the dry periods be what areas are going to see above normal precip this uh, mm-hmm. spring and summer what about below normal precip before we get to that though um gary this has had a, a, a profound impact on our ag community up here um, we've really spread the word, thanks to Bridget, me, um, Jay, and Justin, uh, to our ag community. Can you explain, and, and Bridget, I'll, I'll throw this out to both um, both you and Gary, how does this benefit our agriculture community, the LRC? Yeah, Br- Bridget, let me start, and then I'd love to hear from you because you're the expert in this area, okay? And so, uh, you know, our Weather 2020 team continues to grow. Bryce Palmer's our chief solutions officer now, by the way. You can contact him at Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E, at weather2020.com. He'll, uh, when we go over some of the products we do have for sale, I'm not a salesman, I'm a meteorologist, but you might want to contact him. But he's been working with you guys as well. And the the pattern of cycling, this storm is hitting. And I've got my paperwork too, and we're going to go over this, uh, Jay, later. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> Uh, on this part of the pattern, but uh, there's there's different cycles that have happened, and there are some variances. However, this storm, and Dean and Justin will certainly speak to that as we talked already, is arriving on schedule. It's going to produce likely more than an inch liquid, which means more than a foot of snow is certainly possible, yeah. and possibly twice that much. Yeah. I know you're going to Florida, Jay. Don't yeah. worry about uh, it. I, I, <laughs> I worry about the cl- I worry about the cleanup. I got to come home. Yeah, to. he's in Margaritaville. It'll the rest melt. of us are in snowfall hell. Yeah. <laughs> it might. It might. It might. I love it. Okay, just hire somebody. Anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, but you know. So we know that this is going to produce an inch of liquid, and it is. So you guys can rely on that. So by having that reliability factor, 
with this part of the pattern that will return again in about 45 days. Bridget, I need you to help. What are those advantages for agriculture? Well, at this point, we know that we can go ahead and start planting and feel confident that once we have a crop in the ground, we'll get some rainfall on it. There's moisture that can get us started. You know, we talked about that with our Here We Grow Farm cooperator, uh, Trigby Skolnes and Justin Magnuson. And they said, we think we can get that started, but we're going to need rainfall after the fact to keep it going. It doesn't hurt for us to have additional subsoil as the root systems develop, whether it's on a corn or soybean plant. It's okay when things dry out a little bit, makes those roots stretch and grow, but we want to see where that's going to go through the rest of the season too. And it helps us plan for some fungicides. Uh, if you're a retailer and you've got to bring in supply because you think you're going to have some wet periods during critical time frames in canola and soybeans, you want to be able to order on now. And what about like using the LRC in terms of when in our ag community, we when we know these wet periods will be, when we know the dry periods will be, this affects our ag community in, in many ways. Spraying crops is one of them. Correct? Oh, it's one of them. Uh, but also I think about our livestock producers. You know, when what what is it going to look like for hang season for me? When am I going to be able to, if I can get into this regular cycle of following the LRC, that can help me plan some of my calving cycles too to avoid some of those problems. And for people that don't know what or don't believe in the LRC or... Um, well, I thought it was foo foo dust. Well, I did. I did it first too. So yeah. did I. And I was just going to say, yeah. Justin, when I when when you started here a little over three years ago, <laughs> and I introduced this to you, what was your what was your honestly your first thought when when I said, "Hey, there, there's this new model that we use to forecast long term, and it's 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 more accurate than the seven day app on your phone." What'd you think? What did I get myself into? Oh my God, this is my boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he still says that. Wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> Some I, days. I told him to get the hell off my show. <laughs> you're not doing, you're not doing Hear us out, Jay. Hear us out. You're not doing weather on my show anymore, buddy. Uh, Two twenty one. Let me grab Jason. He's been waiting a while. Jason, you're up on the Jay uh, on the Jay Thomas show, with spring summer, LRC weather outlook show. So when does the forty five days? like stop and then start a new cycle so like we can you said like so this storm coming up this weekend like in 45 more days well we can count on a little maybe something and then another 45 days is that how we so like can we kind of track it ourselves in our own mind i'll hang up and listen thanks chase great great question man yeah. you, you definitely could track it very yourself if you wanted to the cycle will last all the way throughout the year it breaks down at the end of september and a new cycle will begin in the beginning of October, and then it's going to keep going some unique number of days until it recycles. And when you see those key features come back around, either in November or December, then you know how many days the new cycle is going to be for the following year. Now, so it'll real, keep going. real quick for folks that uh, have not followed this before, how do you know when the new LRC starts? Well, What's, What kicks it off? Well, I believe that, Gary, you believe that it has some astronomical meaning with uh, when it goes dark in the North Pole, and that just coincidentally happens to be around the same exact time that the old pattern stops, a new one starts, and then those key upper-level features in the air that flows above us, when we see something very similar or identical to that come back around anywhere between 30 and 70 days in the future, then we can identify that, that all right, yeah, that's the same that looks the same as what happened in early October. That's how long the cycle is. And then, bang, your next storm comes, and you're like, all right, yeah, we know how we long know the cycle is. We know now for sure. Is. And, and again, it's not always 45 days. It could be 60. It could be 40. It, it, it varies. It could be 30. It can sure. be 60. It can be 77. Um, another question. Like, uh, like, for example, Jay, just real quick. For example, I just want to just add to that. A couple of years ago, two two years ago, it was a 63, 64 day cycle. Last year was a 51 ish day cycle. This year happens to be 45, 46, but it's oscillating. So this year I've seen it as low as 41, 42 days, and I've seen it as high as 48, 49 days. And different parts of the world may be stretching. It's like a river flowing across us above us. So it's centered on that reliable factor around 45 to 46 days, and you have to think of it in segments. So to answer that question, he's wondering, is this going to come back in 45 days? What about the other days? We just had three fatalities. Three people died in western Ohio from a tornado. At the, In that same part of the pattern, pattern there was a 21-inch snowstorm for me right outside my window, which was just fantastic. And, Jay, I loved every second. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to. Yeah. He has a better shot. I didn't have to show <laughs> 
I didn't shovel. I didn't do that. So, so, but, um, but that segment, that 10 day, this is a little bit evolving new just, and I've done an analysis of all four cycles, that 10 day segment that produced the severe weather outbreak. There were actually eight days of severe weather in about a two week stretch, 10 day to two week stretch. That whole part of the pattern is going to come back through likely produce a severe weather outbreak. So we put a forecast out for a severe weather outbreak, April 17th to May 1st, okay, when and where and how strong it's going to be. And so, and it may snow here again. And then same thing with this, this part of the pattern, you're going to get a little snow tomorrow, tomorrow night. And then the major storm approaches, both of those systems, the part of the pattern that's coming through will return 100% the LRC is going to be right. It will, that part of the pattern will return. Is it going to produce exactly the same thing? Probably not. So that's the difference. It's the same, but different. Uh, some more uh, uh, questions coming in for you. Uh, studio at WDAYradionow.com, or you can actually watch this show uh, on our uh, WDAY 970 YouTube page. and We've got a chat room opened up there. Uh, it says, so guys, this big storm that keeps cycling through every 45 days, will that be uh, this strong every single time? No, as Gary said, it, it, it likely won't be. So when this cycled through in December, uh, we got that was a huge storm. When it came through the next cycle, uh, it it wasn't as strong, but it was still there. Right, it still that, brought an inch of rain and ice an inch of from rain. Grand Forks yeah. to Jamestown. Yeah. So now this cycle, it's back to the strength that looks like it was for that Christmas storm. So it will vary each cycle, but we know it's going to be there. Now when this cycles back in uh, in May, uh, obviously we're going to probably be on the warm side of this, and we better don't have be. To we yeah, we, <laughs> we'll probably be dealing with some uh, maybe severe weather the next time this comes through. Not only in May, but I think it's slated again. Um, let's see, I've got it on the calendar here, May seventh through the tenth, right in that time frame generally, and then again towards that third week in June. So when yeah, right the, when summer begins, right when summer begins. So when it comes through those times, you know, not only we're going to have rain, but we might have severe weather with it, too, because this is a pretty classic storm um, with, you know, yeah. a, again, heavy rain and possible severe weather on its warm sector. And then um, just a massive storm um, of snow. I hate to use the B, yeah. wor- B word. We're not me, there, but <laughs> uh, stop it. Here's some more. Here's Gene, some let me go to my pa- let, me, do, uh, let me go to my paperwork real quick. Sure. What, do we have a break coming up? Yeah, we do. Okay, do we about have three, about three minutes. OK. Okay, good. So I've got all four cycles just to show you the differences. Cycle one, LRC cycle one, you go back to November 9th and 10th, right in there. Okay, LRC cycle one, Fargo had 0.2 inches of snow, I believe is your first measurable snow. Okay, Um, LRC cycle two happens to be 45 days later. December 23rd to 27th, you had 2.83 inches liquid. You had freezing rain. There was a major ice storm just to your west. And then one inch of snow. It was eight degrees four days before that. If that would have been, if that cold air would have just been timed slightly different, you would have had a massive snowstorm. But instead, you had beneficial lots of rain for a winter storm. That's ridiculous. Then cycle three was February 8th and 9th, 45 days later. You had 4,900s liquid, mostly rain again, and one and a half inches of snow. And now here comes LRC cycle four. So yes, it's the same, but different. Sometimes it'll be just about as strong in all four cycles in some parts of the world. And then others will have, it'll be there, but this one just happens to be another wet one uh, right on schedule. All right. Uh, email, uh, Jay, I follow th- this cycle very closely my crew this is a business owner my crew works outside i didn't even schedule them for this uh for this weekend my guys wanted to know why we were not working i told them just wait and see <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah how about that um let's see another email it says gary the last couple of years has stated that we were to be 140%, 120% of rainfall through the LRC. And I know, saw far, okay, dude, please do not do talk to text if you don't have to, because when it comes across, 
I do not understand what you're trying to say. So to that gentleman, M.M., that just uh, uh, sent me that, you you gotta you, you have to uh, resend it and look at it before you send it. All right, it's, uh, it's coming up on 2.30. We need to take a break here. Uh, when we come back, more with Gary Lezak, uh, CEO of Weather 2020, founder of the LRC. Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki is here. Meteorologist Justin Storm, our Ag Director Bridget Riedel is here. And also your calls, your emails, uh, studio at WDAYradionow.com. The phone number is area code 701 21 or 293 9000. You can also watch the show today on our YouTube channel. Uh, that channel is WDAY 970 AM. Get on there and watch the show that way. If you go that way, you're also going to be able to see all the graphics when, when we put them up. And uh, it's it's like you're watching a weather show. And also make sure you subscribe and like our page as well. And then you'll be uh, you hit that bell. Then you know when we put new stuff up there. Uh, all right. Let's uh, take our break. Come back more of the spring summer LRC weather lookout 2024 on the Jay Thomas show at 970 WDAY 93.1 FM. Are you having transmission problems and struggling to find a place to work on it? I've got some exciting news for you. I'm Matthew from Fix It Forward Auto Care, and we're excited to announce that we're now offering full-service transmission repair for automotive and light truck applications, including repair, rebuilding, and replacement. If your transmission is making unusual noises, slips, or is leaking, stop by any of our four convenient FM locations so our skilled technicians can check it out. Fix It Forward Auto Care, the name you trust for car repair. Fix It Forward Auto Care. Would you rather have a personal house cleaner or a personal chef? That's an easy one. I love food. I would take the personal chef. Would you rather stay inside during a snow day or be outside and make a snow angel? Hands down, make a snow angel. We grew up right here in North Dakota, lived our whole lives here, so we know how tough North Dakota winters can be. And how windy and hot North Dakota summers can be. That's why we carry the toughest energy saving and the best looking windows and doors you can dress your home in. I'm Jaden. And I'm Andrew, manager of the Window and Door store here in Fargo. We don't pressure folks because we know it's a big decision. We'll take the time to answer all your questions, show you different options, and if you'd like, we'll give you a no obligation estimate. On one window, four windows, or windows for your whole home. Give us a jingle if you like us to stop at your home. 701-205-0110. Better windows, better doors. The Window and Door Store in Fargo. It's about tradition, values, and family ties. Pucklet Chevrolet GMC's tradition of giving back to our community remains a priority. And that's why we've partnered with many local nonprofit organizations and events. And our tradition of giving this community a fair and honest offer continues. This month, save up to $10,102 on a new 23 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. We're Pucklet Chevrolet GMC in Valley City. GMC, we are professional great. See dealer for details and 43024. If you're looking for honest, dependable, over-the-top customer service at affordable prices, you'll want to do business with Welton's Tire Service in Lisbon, North Dakota. Welton's is a name you've grown to trust, proudly serving the area for 50 years. Welton's Tire always works hard for customer satisfaction and service. They offer brands for every make. If you need tires, repair, maintenance, or on-farm tire service, contact Welton's Tire on Main Street in Lisbon. Tell them Beth sent you. Online at weltonstire.net. Are you tired of woke investment firms trying to push their political agenda onto your money? This is Brian Cronk, financial advisor at Collins & Cronk here in Fargo. If you are through with big East Coast companies and their ESG agenda, call Collins & Cronk for a consultation. See how we build a plan based on what matters to you. Call Collins & Cronk today, 701-235-0119. That's 701-235-0119. At Collins & Cronk, you matter. Raymond James Financial Services, Inc. member FINRA, SIPC. Collins & Cronk is not a broker-dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services. Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through four three while supplies last. Selection varies by location. This check on the news brought to you by Innovative Basement Authority, specializing in basement waterproofing, foundation repair, and other services. 
to give you a safer, drier home. Online at InnovativeBasementAuthority.com. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. The West Fargo City Commission has voted 3-2 to two against using city-owned land to allow for the construction of a turn lane into the Shea West Garden Center. That's something the business owners have been pushing for. City Commissioner Mandy George. We have a capital improvement um, economic or economic development fund, which has been voted on by the public for um, money to help small businesses specifically. We have funds available for this. And so it, it's just this, this is a perfect situation where that money could be used to help them. George says the city needs to back small business. A proposal that would raise the minimum wage in Minnesota to $15 an hour is advancing in the state Senate. The Labor Committee passed the measure yesterday, allowing it to be part of a larger employment bill that will be considered later in the session. The proposal would raise the minimum wage for all businesses to $15 an hour this year and mandate a $1.25 increase each year after that. The rate would reach $20 an hour in 2028. The state's current minimum wage for large businesses is ten eighty five, while the minimum for small businesses is eight eighty five. The Minnesota Twins' home opener April 4th will include a tribute to the two police officers and firefighter paramedics shot and killed while responding to a domestic call in Burnsville last month. Tom Tucker, WDAY and WDAYRadioNow.com. Attention experienced senior level techs with five years of experience. Northern Plains Equipment, a certified Case IH dealer in Minot, North Dakota, is looking for you. Join the team and perform quality maintenance and repairs on all types of agricultural equipment. Northern Plains Equipment is a value-led, 100% employee-owned company, offering competitive wages, benefits, and job training. If you're ready to work in a great environment with great people, apply at plainsag.com. Northern Plains Equipment, Inc., proud to be an equal opportunity employer. When you buy a Subaru, you're not just buying a car. You're buying safety, value, and trust for all the ones you love. That's why you see so many Subarus on the roads around you. Check out the new model selection available today, and be sure to ask about special low rates available now through April 1st during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Stop in at Muscatel Subaru, just off exit 1 in Moorhead. Subaru, built to last. Hey friends, it's Aaron Wimmer here to spread the sparkle. Join us at Wimmer's Diamonds for our spectacular ring and band event now through Saturday. Stack up the savings with discounts of 10, 20, even up to 30% off. We've got hundreds of stunning new ring styles waiting for you to try, from engagement rings to wedding bands and everything in between. Swing by Wimmer's Diamonds, where every ring tells a story and every moment sparkles brighter. Wimmer's Diamonds, 4582, 32nd Avenue South in Fargo. When it comes to keeping your auto ready for action, Jiffy Lube of Fargo is the team to beat. The Jiffy Lube Signature Service helps your auto fire on all cylinders like an all-star. With a comprehensive preventative maintenance to check, change, inspect, and fill essential systems. Keeping your vehicle game ready for trips across town or across the country. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, locally owned and operated with three Fargo locations for speed and convenience and no appointment needed. More of the Jay Thomas Show in 60 seconds. Okay, so you've heard about the Sunday brunch at Barron's Eatery at Kingpin's every Sunday. Well, wait till you see how they're amping it up a bit for Easter. Sunday, March 31st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Join us at Barron's at Kingpin's for their Easter brunch. Smokehouse ham, build your own waffle bar, two chef's entree specials, baked Reggiano hash browns, biscuits and gravy, garlic mashed potatoes with gravy, their thick-cut hickory smoked bacon, sausage links. They're doing a chef's special egg bake along with the regular egg bake, fresh caramel rolls made to order, assorted fruit, assorted pastries and croissants, and of course the dessert bar. 25 bucks for adults, kids eat for 15 bucks, 12 and under. You're going to need to call for a reservation, though. 701-532-BOWL. Push extension 2. 701-532-BOWL. Extension 2. Or stop into Barron's Host Stand and make your reservation there. Barron's Eatery at Kingpin's for Easter brunch. We'll see you there. Yeah, like a Ronnie, I love it. Uh, all weather, weather-related uh, bumper music today. 
I got a few you can toss on the list. Okay. Uh, I'm open to suggestions, yeah, as you know. I love it, man. Jay Thomas Show, welcome to it. I want away from Florida. Yeah, baby. Jeez. <laughs> it's going to rain down there. Yeah, it's going to rain for a day. Big deal. Who cares? That's what bars are for. We'll, we'll hang out with the drunken clam all day, man. <laughs> like you weren't going to anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, seriously. Uh, all right, welcome welcome to it. It is the uh, spring-summer LRC Weather Outlook 2024 with us, the CEO of Weather 2020 uh, and the founder of the LRC, Gary Lezak, is with us, Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki, Meteorologist Justin Storm, and also our Ag Director, Bridget Riedel. Your car, cars, cars, calls are welcome anytime. It's uh, 701-293-9000. You can email us, studio at WDAYradionow.com. Also, you can watch this show today uh, as it happens live, and you'll see all the graphics when we're talking graphics and all that. Uh, go to uh, our YouTube channel, WDAY 970 AM. Make sure you subscribe to it, too, and uh, and hit the uh, bell for notifications. And But we also have a chat room set up there, so you can chat uh, along. If, if you don't want to email, you can just chat. We'll read your chats and your questions. But I'll do something else today. I never do this. I, I, have, I've, I, just, I don't do this on my show because I'm so dead set against it. If you want to text the program today, you can text the program today if it makes it easier for you. But that will be today and today only. I do not do text messaging they on my text show. Me, I'll text why? Them for you. Well, why? Why don't you do text uh, messages? I can, I can tell you exactly why. Because if you do that, then everybody's texting you, so you're reading text messages all day long on a talk radio show instead of taking phone calls and actually talking to people. And that's the problem with society today. Nobody talks to each other. They sit out and type okay, a bunch of it. crap on. Yeah. So it's like. I'm probably probably the only show in the region that will not accept text messaging, but I will today. If you've got your weather questions or you text Bridget, how do they text you, Bridget? They've all been. Oh, don't th- give that away. No, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. So what the hell good does that do? My listeners don't know what your text. Some, uh, how to some text people you. got it. Yeah, some yeah, people. Some people. But, but if you want the world. To well, but they're sending respond. me DMs on on X as well at BM Real, yeah, and so I've got a whole list of where where they're going, what they need to know. All right. Um, just all the facts. And all right. Let me get. Let me before we get back to the calls, guys. And then coming up here, we're gonna the the, the boys. They're gonna give you the the entire spring and summer LRC outlook. And w- later on, we will take your calls and your questions. If you got a specific date or or days where you're going somewhere and you want to know, I'm already getting those emails and those direct messages too. We're not blowing those off. We'll save those for later on. Uh, this email uh, from Lori says, uh, just curious, what does the monsoon season in Arizona look like this year? Because last year it was non-existent. Right. Yeah, the monsoon in the southwestern part of the United States is created by what's called an anti-cyclone, uh, upper level ridge of, of high heights that develops over the hot regions of the southwestern United States. These exist around the world as well. But when it gets real hot during the summer, its natural position is to center over the Four Corners uh, area of New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. So if it becomes strong and shifts a little bit to the east, then you get flow coming around it that brings in the seasonal wind. Monsoon means seasonal wind. So when this comes into the southwest, it can bring moisture from Mexico, the Gulf of Mexico, and they end up with thunderstorms. And they have these things that are called, you ready for this, Jay? You ready for this? Yeah. Habo- haboobs. Oh, you know God, I right. I'm going to write that one down. Yeah. Haboobs. Do you know what a haboob is? I'm going to see, well, I'll see yeah. a lot of them uh, this week in Florida. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm here all day, man. Yeah, I'm here all day. Where's my tip uh, jar? A, ha- a haboob, a haboob is a storm, is a, is a, is a complex thunderstorm that forms over the deserts and produces a downburst wind, a microburst wind, and there, then you can see like a, a dust storm coming your way from around Phoenix. They're literally called haboobs. I did not make that up. So will it be active this summer uh, down in the Southwest? You know, when we discuss the summer forecast, we'll try to analyze that. I haven't done that analysis yet, but I know what you mean. 
it, there were no haboobs in Arizona. Last do you have uh, guys? Do we have a graph for a haboob that we can put up? Do we? Do we have? I'll find. No, out. you will not, Dean. <laughs> no, you will, you are not in charge not of that. that graphic. No, Dean. No, I, stop I had it. To Justin, Justin did training Google last time. Yeah. All right. Hey, here's another. Here's another one, uh, um, guys. Uh, it's been very dry south of Fargo the last three years. Is that the way it's going to be again this year? Well, we'll have an answer to that coming up when we give the. Uh, the full, uh, the full outlook. Um, let's see. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just going through these. I got, a, I got a lot already for uh, uh, specific dates. We'll get to those. Uh, to the phones, John in Fargo. You're up on the Jay Thomas show and the uh, weather outlook. Just a quick question for Gary. Um, I, I know you said you've been doing this for like 35 years. I'm just curious what, what got you to looking at it and and trying to nail down a pattern like this in the first place. I, I'm kind of curious about like the history behind what, how did it become a thing? Cause I'm sure like probably 25, 30 years ago when you started telling people about this stuff, they figured, you know what, here's some nutcase trying to rewrite the old <laughs> farm. <Dumbass. laughs> uh, well, that's a great question. You know, uh, I grew up ever since I was five years old. I've been interested in weather. My first memories are of clouds and weather, and and it's just in me. And then Dr. George Fishbeck was a big meteorologist, a great a scientist on TV in uh, Southern California. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I was a valley boy, and where the weather was really boring, I didn't know any better. I thought that it was fascinating out there, so that's probably why I get so excited about anything weather anywhere else I go. But what happened is about 11, 12 years old, this meteorologist on TV would show the river of air up there, like the 500 millibar flow on, on if you go to my Substack, weather2020.substack.com, uh, that's, I often show the 500 millibar flow. The LRC is where the jet stream reaches its peak strength. But I got obsessed with that. And so I went to University of Oklahoma. I got my degree in meteorology. And in 1985, 86, someone said a really bad word on TV, and I got my first big break in television. What was the word? And Ron Burgundy. <laughs> 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 you know what word it was. It's the worst, the worst word. Is there a worst word? Oh, I could. I could Everyone's got their own. Yeah. 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 Oh, you've got Snow. a whole bunch of them. Well, anyway, it's... It, but he said that on the air, and that's how I got my career started. Uh, it was actually the whole long story. I'll spare you the details. Uh, that's for another day. Uh, but a year later, after I started on television in Oklahoma City, we had a – it's on my wall behind me. You can sort of see it blurred out back there. And there was a snowstorm in December, and then a, a one-foot snowstorm in a place that averages eight inches of snow a year. Then about six, seven, eight weeks later, there was another one foot snowstorm. And I noticed that the pattern that produced that snowstorm, the second one, looked almost identical to the first one. And that's where I started developing the theory. Five years later, I moved to Kansas City, have a successful 31 year career on television there. And um, I started sharing this technology with the bloggers. Fast forward to 2002, 2003, they were saying, Gary, stop telling us that, hey, can't you see this storm looks like the one from 45 days ago, like we're doing right now? And they said, just project forward. So we started doing that. And that's 20 years ago now. And we're just now getting to the technology of the day. We have a model, the LRC model. It's patent pending. I got an email today from the not the patent office from the attorneys who want to make some money. And they, <laughs> they said that we need we need to apply for the patent in other countries by June. So uh, it's patent pending in the United States and um, it's patent pending in other countries, but I got to apply for official patents. But just know we have a model. It is tomorrow's model today, but that's the history. That, and that's why it's taking this long for this what is a discovery to come to the market. We have products for you. You can share with us. 
You can join weather2020.substack.com. Please do that. It's less than a dollar a day, and you can be in on this secret that we are sharing with everyone every week. And then we have a brand new thing coming out. I know Justin and Dean are just love. It. I don't know if they've shown you yet. Have you shown Jay yet? yet? Not yet. Nope. They don't show me anything. You haven't? No. Not yet. Oh my god! It's not <laughs> nice enough. It's a, it's it's <laughs> going to nice. be called the Global Predictor. So everyone's question that they have about their specific date, within a month, this will be out, and it'll be a low cost, very low cost for consumers. And um, you'll be able to get your forecast for your wedding, your date to Florida, months in advance. And it's accurate. We just had uh, on that product, for example, Jeremy Nelson is in Savannah, Georgia. He's a chief meteorologist down there. And Jeremy saved uh, we have a version of it on our website right now you can go to weather2020.com and actually play around with a three month ahead forecast it's always three months ahead but he saved the one in december for march because he wanted to know the saint patrick's day forecast 83 degrees is what it said for savannah georgia he's like well this will be interesting and do you know what, what it was on saint patrick's day in savannah 82 83 degrees 83 <laughs> oh, that's crazy man. i didn't yeah, John. Appreciate. Anyway, the, that's the history. Appreciate the phone call. Great question. Let's go to Tom. Tom, uh, thanks for hanging on. You're up on the Jay Thomas show. Yeah, just quick question. So the storm that we had in December and 45 days later, when did this storm actually come to light? When did this start? Well, oh my gosh, that's a great question. I don't want to get too scientific, and uh, Bridget, Dean, Justin, Jay, stop me if I do, but. Just in the past two weeks, I've done a complete analysis of this past segment of weather. As I told you about the Ohio deadly tornado, the major snowstorm that produced 50 inches of snow at my favorite restaurant, just 11 minutes from my house. It was so cool to drive up there. Okay, I just love the snow. <laughs> but uh, um, there's th this, this storm, the, the, the part of the pattern that produced the last segment started around October 24th, and then ended around November 1st. So that is about a, a nine-day stretch. In the second cycle, it started around December 7th, ended around December 19th. In the third cycle, it started around January 24th and ended February 1st, something like that. And then this last, last cycle was February, March 5th, ending just yesterday. And... When I say I start at the beginning, we can see a system come across the West Coast, dive in, form into a storm, followed by another system diving in, forming in the storm, and it's about a 10-day segment of the pattern. So this storm that you're about to experience has a beginning where it evolved in the Eastern Pacific or the West Coast and then hits you, but it's part of a whole 10-day segment, and that sometimes can can vary the dates a little bit but that's that's i don't know if i answered it correctly but that's it's something that came across the west coast it's coming across the west coast right now actually mm -hmm. and it's the beginning of this next 10 day stretch where you're going to get two snowstorms there you go tom appreciate it uh, another one uh uh, guys, it looks like a majority of the Red River Valley won't see snow from the big storm this weekend now until Monday morning, question mark, according to a new model from this afternoon. That's a good question. In fact, Justin and I were just talking about that. Um, I think the majority of it now is looking to come in Sunday night into Monday. Uh, that could change. The storm's still like. Does that here, drop the totals then? Because instead of being not, all day not Sunday, really. oh, no, God. not much. Yeah. It may be a, a, a tad, but there's uh, just taking a look at the latest model runs. Um, we're still at or over a foot of snow here with mm. heavier amounts just to our south. Now, again, a slight. With this storm being off the Pacific, uh, it's we're, it, the track will continue to change. Sure. It's slowing down. It's getting a little stronger. That's why there's a little bit of a delay okay. uh, in the snow arriving. Uh, hey, we got to thank our sponsors, by the, way, by the way, for the Spring Summer LRC Weather Outlook 2024 on the Jay Thomas Show. Big thank you to Jiffy Lube of Fargo. Also, Plains Ag for those who demand more. Uh, they are employee-owned. And also, uh, the Money Farm. Bridget, I know you are bombarded. Bombarded with questions. Is this stuff we got to hold <laughs> off on, or um, so if you want to take one of them right now, yeah. this I've gotten about five times already. Okay, the old wives' tale of 
Fog oh. today. Are we going to have moisture in 90 days? Does the LRC prove or disprove it? That's going to take me. A, that's going to take a number of these questions out for me. Well, that's 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 like the old one too. You used to always hear when you get your first frost, or, or or I should say your first crack of thunder. Yep. The old wives' tale was exactly six months later will be your first frost. Gary, what you got? You got two of them. Um, that's just an old wives' tale. Both yeah. of them. So what's the first one? The first one was if we have moisture uh, 90 days later, or excuse me, if we have fog 90 days later, there'll be a moisture event, whether rain or snow. Typically rain. See, what we're looking at here, even though these are wives' tales, it's the farmers being so smart over the years. I mean, you guys are so, so smart. You're in touch with the weather. And one of those years or a few years, it was probably about a 45-day cycle. So when that happened 90 days before, two cycles later, of course it's going to produce fog because the same part of the pattern is cycling through. Does that make sense? So there is some validity to those old wives' tales because okay. they actually did happen at one time. But some years it could be 90 days later. Some years it could be 100 days later. Okay. So just so you know. It's, it's and what, what, close. I was, I was, yeah, I was distracted because I was looking at the latest European model and it has the latest data has 1.35 inches liquid in Fargo. And then along the North Oof. Dakota, South Dakota border, it all has one to two inches liquids. So that would be one foot or more of snow. Now, granted, northern North Dakota gets missed again. And that's been a dry area. Mm -hmm. So this storm, this storm in December, as you know, you guys, it was southern half of North Dakota, wasn't it? Uh, we had some stuff statewide, but you're right. The heavier mm -hmm. was okay. the south. Um, another uh, another email. Uh, hey, uh, guys, we're just coming out of one of the most abnormal winters I can remember. How much of that was predicted in the LRC? That's a great question. Remember our, our winter forecast back in December? Uh, Justin, Dean, and I all had our predictions, I think. And we, we went with the lower number of snow for the season. We said 32 inches of snow. What do you average? Uh, what did I say? 22 inches. Yep. We average about 50. I know. You're yeah, winning. We, we usually average about 50, and mm -hmm. we're, we're sitting at a little over 12 right now. So if we get about another foot on top of that, we're at 24. So yeah, we're not another, far off. Another possible storm after that. Right. right. But I remember when right. we did the when we did the fall winter, everybody. I I, I remember that's what was talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just it's it's going to be below average this year. So yeah, that was predicted in the LRC. Well, even that, and even a, a ballsier thing to go out and say is that you're going to be in the 40s in February, and sure enough, <laughs> there we were. Yeah. Our taste in the 40s Boy, and 50s. The truth. Yeah. Um, I let's know. see. Um, yeah. Guys, are any of the local meteorologists starting to buy into the LRC? And I wouldn't call it buying into it. I would call it, are you getting on board? Because it's the real deal. <laughs> There's well, a couple. There's one. Well, the one, one for sure. One that I know for sure. I, I won't mention his name. Oh, uh, I thought you told me who this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and he's uh, even said something to me before about it. Yeah, too, yeah. And, and he's he's a, he's a well-known meteorologist here in town, and um, he used to do research uh, out in Boulder before he got into uh, TV weather. So he knows what research is all about. And he said, you know what? He goes, I'm not exactly sure how the LRC works. He goes, but. Um, Gary is absolutely 100% onto something here, without a doubt. Uh -huh. uh, Bridget, you got more? Or? Um, I, the, one, the more ones that I have are probably going to fit better as we start doing the, the calendar. Which the calendar. we'll do that uh, after, after yeah. our next break. We'll dive into uh, okay. April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. So the first part of spring into early summer, mainly spring, but we'll dive into what it looks like in terms of temperature uh, and uh, and precip. Go, are we going to go through the whole summer or just through? Oh June? yeah, no, we'll okay. go okay. April, May, yeah, and June yeah. just for the as we start off next hour, and then we'll cover the back end Good. of summer. Uh, when's our last frost expected to be? That's very important it for is. our ag community. Generally, I start we my look garden. at September. Right? Yeah, yeah I'm, I got, how soon? Guys, guys are messaging me want to know when they get their Harleys out of storage. That answer right now. is coming up. Yeah, seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. Email studio at wdayradio now dot com. That's our Tyler's Tree Service inbox. Our studio line. That's our Thor Bill.
Building Studio Line Post Frame Construction for Ag and Commercial Industry. Want to thank our Spring Summer LRC Weather Outlook Sponsors 2024, and that is Jiffy Lube of Fargo, Plains Ag for those who demand more, and also the Money Farm. More with Gary and Dean and Justin and Bridget and myself. Your calls, your emails. When we come back, they're going to start breaking down what your spring and summer is going to look like. They're going to go through the months. That is next on the Jay Thomas Show. PetroServe USA has great March specials for you. Spoonable edible cookie dough, four fifty nine. Oh, ice cream pints, all flavors, four ninety nine. Old Trapper, ten ounce, twelve ninety nine. Eight ounce Red Bulls, three for six fifty. Sixteen ounce Red Bull, two for seven dollars. Nestle twenty eight packs of water, four ninety nine. Girl Scout cookie bites, four ninety nine. Two pack electronic lighters, ninety nine cents. Any size fountain, coffee or cappuccino, eighty nine cents. PetroServe USA, helping America fuel better. You know there's one near you. PetroServe USA. You expect your home to protect everything you love, but you don't expect the ways water is breaking down your foundation and damaging your home. Cracks in walls and uneven floors are just a few signs your foundation is compromised. But there's one way to get answers to all your concerns. A free home inspection from Innovative Basement Authority. We put water back in its place. Go to InnovativeBasementAuthority.com. License number C139366, BC765730. In the dynamic world of grain farming, your friends at The Money Farm know every decision impacts your journey to profitability. The Money Farm offers commodity advisory services across the ag industry and works with producers across the U.S. on grain marketing strategies. You've spent years maximizing your production. Now it's time to maximize your marketing. If you have any questions on current markets or are looking for grain marketing advice, contact The Money Farm online at themoneyfarm.com. It's about tradition, values, and family ties. Pucklet Chevrolet GMC's tradition of giving back to our community remains a priority. And that's why we've partnered with many local nonprofit organizations and events. And our tradition of giving this community a fair and honest offer continues. This month, save up to $10,102 on a new 23 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. We're Pucklet Chevrolet GMC in Valley City. GMC, we are professional great. See dealer for details and 43024. Northern Plains Equipment, a certified Case IH dealer in Mandan, North Dakota, is seeking a motivated salesperson to join their dynamic team. If you have organizational and computer skills, coupled with a passion for helping customers in the agricultural machinery sector, Plains Ag wants to hear from you. Experience in agriculture and equipment is desired. Enjoy competitive wages, comprehensive benefits, and job training in a values-led company. Email your resume to hr at plainsag.com. On the job for you with the largest news and weather teams in radio. AM 970 and FM 93.1. WDAY, Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. Time now is 3.02 on this Wednesday afternoon and 24 degrees outside our South Fargo studios. Uh, under fair skies, winds out of the northwest at 15 miles an hour. News this hour is brought to you by Halberstadt's West Acres Mall. Halberstadt's West Acres Mall is the largest menswear retailer in North Dakota. Beginning this fall, some North Dakotans and South Dakotans will be allowed to attend MSUM without paying for tuition. What we are launching is a tuition-free program that is guaranteed uh, to cover all remaining tuition after gift aid is applied for uh, Min- or, sorry, North Dakota and South Dakota residents. So- Vice President of Strategic Enrollment, uh, Jason Trainer, speaking about the expansion of the North Star Promise Program at MSUM. It's open to students from families whose annual gross adjusted income is less than $80,000. There are no grade eligibility requirements, and the program does not have a set end date. A woman was rescued from a rollover crash that ended up in the water near Underwood. The sheriff's office was notified of the crash around 2.15 this morning in the area near the 21,000 block of German Lake Road. The driver, 43-year-old Nicole Beauchamp, was found trapped in the vehicle. After breaking the vehicle's sunroof, Beauchamp was removed from the wreck and taken to a nearby health care facility for treatment of non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities believe alcohol was a factor in the crash, and they're in the process of securing a search warrant. 
A $4.2 million federal grant for the University of North Dakota Energy and Environmental Research Center, we are told, will help the university develop a cheaper and more efficient way to produce hydrogen. Researchers are working on producing so-called green hydrogen production. They say it's a renewable way to separate natural gas into hydrogen and carbon dioxide and capture the CO2 rather than release it back into the atmosphere. And the Minnesota legislature is considering a new state law that would overrule the new rideshare minimum wage ordinance passed in the city of Minneapolis. Uber and Lyft drivers, or rather officials for those companies, say they're leaving the Minneapolis area market on May 1st because of the new city ordinance. Governor Tim Walz says he typically doesn't support overriding local ordinances, but says it might make sense in this case. Tom Tucker, WDAY, and WDAYRadioNow.com. More of the Jay Thomas Show coming up. Hi, I'm Chad Zimmerman from North Star Financial. Many financial advisors just want to work with doctors and lawyers, but we know that guys who can swing a hammer or weld a seam don't just do honorable work, they have careers to be proud of. So whether your workwear is surgical scrubs, wingtips and loafers, or boots and jeans, and if you come in with a little bit of mud on your boots, we don't mind. We're North Star Financial, the financial advisor for the rest of us. Securities and advisory services offered through Commonwealth Financial Network. Member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Visit NorthSFG.net. From ABC News, I'm Michelle Franzen. Tensions growing between the U.S. and Israel over the hunger situation in Gaza and political divides also emerging after Democratic Senate leader Chuck Schumer called for new elections in Israel. The prime minister now turning to Republican lawmakers. The Israeli prime minister met via video hookup with Senate Republicans, and he had what Mike Johnson describes as a lengthy call with the House Speaker. Johnson told reporters the GOP staunchly opposes Senate Leader Chuck Schumer's call for new Israeli elections. It's dangerous for him to be uh, trying to uh, suggest how Israel should run its domestic affairs. Johnson says he's considering inviting Benjamin Netanyahu to address lawmakers. A speech to a joint meeting of Congress would require Schumer's consent. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. Both President Biden and GOP candidate Donald Trump are projected winners in Tuesday's state primary races, including Arizona. President Biden in Phoenix today touting his Investing in America agenda. Agenda funding, he says, is creating high-paying jobs in Arizona. This historic funding will use to build new semiconductor fab facilities and modernize, modernize and expand existing ones in Arizona, Ohio, New Mexico and Oregon. Opil is now available online and starting this week, Walgreens tells ABC News it will begin stocking the over-the-counter birth control pill at stores nationwide. The price just under $20 for a one-month pack. Walgreens and CVS also say they've started offering the progesterone blocker mifepristone in some states where abortion is legal. The Federal Reserve Board keeping interest rates unchanged for now and announcing three interest rate cuts sometime this year. Chair Jerome Powell says more progress is needed. But inflation is still too high. Ongoing progress in bringing it down is not assured and the path forward is uncertain. But the future looks bright for investors. Stocks soaring on word that interest rate cuts are in store this year. You're listening to ABC News. Pizza's here. Oh, great. I'd love some, but I'm worried about my stomach issues. If you're worried about having diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, or loose oily stools, it may not just be stomach issues. It could be a condition called exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI. With EPI, the pancreas doesn't release enough enzymes to break down food, but EPI is manageable. Use the symptom checker on identifyepi.com and talk to your doctor. That's identifyepi.com. Sponsored by AbbVie. Offer not valid in all states or prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. Mostly sunny, breezy, and cool for this afternoon. We'll have highs in the upper 20s with a north wind around 10 to 20. Increasing clouds overnight tonight as we drop down to a low in the upper teens to near 20. And winds go lighter out of the north-northeast at 5 to 10. Clouds thicken up on Thursday and light snow overspreads the area by late in the day. We'll have highs close to freezing. Snow continues Thursday night into early Friday morning with about 1 to 2 inches of snow likely. 
From the WDAY Skywatch Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki. Your diesel truck works hard, whether it's pulling a skid steer, working on the farm, or driving to work each day. If it's not 100%, that can be a problem. Is your pickup not running like it used to? Now is the time to contact the team at ATI Fargo. They know Duramax, Power Stroke, and Cummins inside and out. Get your light-duty diesel pickup to ATI Fargo, where they have a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty on new parts and labor. Keep your diesel pickup working at its best with ATI Fargo, the top place for diesel pickup repairs. That's ATI Fargo. Broadcasting live from the Miller High Life Studio, this is the Jay Thomas Show on WDAY. Got a feeling for a lot of you folks. Oh my gosh! It's going to be a uh, North Dakota sweet crude kind of weekend. I'll tell you about that later on. Man. Whoop, whoop. Gary's digging I this love music. Song. Ronnie, Ronnie, who is I, who is this, Ronnie? ELO. It's ELO. Oh, okay. Mr. Blue Sky. It's Sunday one of the worst Saturday yellow songs Avenue. ever produced. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sounds too much like the Beatles. That does kind of sound like the Beatles. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Okay, here we go. Listen, 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 listen. Mr. Blue Sky. You know, Ronnie, you've been with me now how many years? <laughs> <laughs> I think you would have uh, thought maybe like Blue Sky by the Almond Brothers, you know. I didn't say that really wasn't, cool. I didn't say that wasn't happening. We got two more hours of this show. So. Mm. <laughs> I thought we were going to say something yeah. else there for a second. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 Like two Ronnie, more hours of this. Uh, radio, not just YouTube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got to keep telling Jay, myself when that you too. Asked last, I, I was going to request this song. I, I literally was an hour ago, and then boom. There, there it is. Well, Benjamin. now you have my new system, the MRC. I predict music. So. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie, okay. hashtag genius. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, before we get into this um, outlook here, real quick. Hey, guys, keep hearing lots of snow, but will we have wind to go with it? Will I make it to church on Sunday morning? Do I need to have my children's lesson ready? Good question. Justin, you want to take it or you want me to take it? You should be able to get to church just fine on, yeah. the, on the Sunday morning. The mm-hmm. wind will start to start to pick up as you head into Sunday, though. About 15 to 30 out of the northeast is what it looks like right now. And then uh, it should get a little lighter on Monday. It's still going to be blowing snow, but I don't quite know if it'll be blizzard yeah. conditions. I, I, I think the worst part of the storm is going to be Sunday evening into Sunday overnight into Monday morning. Yeah, so I guess the really light and fluffy stuff Tuesday morning might be a bit uh, blowing snow as well. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be a, a about two-day storm, maybe a little longer. Mm-hmm. All right, um, another email. Uh, can you tell us, is it going to be a windy spring and summer? Well, let's get into that. Let's, let's start get into it. the start. spring summer outlook, guys. All right, let's start off. Um, and Michael, uh, I don't have any paper. Oh, no, that's if, good. Michael, if you want to pull up that uh, one graphic, it uh, shows uh, temperature and precip from April through June. Um, no, will be fine. So there we go. So what we're looking at is it kind of the same thing that we've been now it's it's been believe it or not even with the lack of snow it's been a pretty normal winter in terms of moisture around the valley and point southward and just eastward and uh what is that noise Gary. That's Gary. Uh, it's ra- Rainbow, my dog. Is oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rainbow. <laughs> Sit. Stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, it's the weather dog. Yeah. It's the, there you go. Um, so in the valley, um, and and Justin, why don't you exaggerate or um, kind yeah, of exaggerate? Go, exaggerate not exaggerate. Everything. You know, we're hype it up for, storm. Yeah, um, kind of go into detail. Uh, overall, from April, mid-April through June, end of June, we're looking at pretty normal average temperatures in the southern half of the valley and out into peri- uh, periods of western Minnesota, but below average um, as you head just west of the valley. Now, there's going to be key times in there where we get um, some much-needed precip, and Justin, I'll let you take over from there. On when the storms are going to be ripping through? Yeah, so the, the, key, the, the the bigger storms that have the the more uh, bountiful uh, moisture, uh, I guess. Just just first, f- first temperature-wise, what are we looking at? Above or below here in the in the Te- valley? Temperature-wise, above normal. And we're looking at probably 5 to 10 degrees above normal well, through this spring. Precip-wise. Precip-wise, in the FM area, points southward and just eastward in the lakes country, 
at or above average. Okay. All right. With but that. there are going to be the dry no. stretches, and there might be at times, you know, a, a few weeks where we don't see a substantial no. rain for right. some areas around here, and that'll be most favorable as you go west of the valley, become a little more probable as you head into. Uh, Say south and east, south and north. All right, Haboob, give it to us. (laughs) All right. Have you called it up? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we'll be looking for a couple of storms as we head into April. There's a couple of of good ones that could bring in some uh, decent amount of moisture up here. One of those uh, is going to be heading in towards the end of the month. But before that, we'll be looking at a, a, a storm system that first week. Uh, of April, around the third or fourth, and then a secondary one that'll probably be a, a bit on the bigger side, right around the thirteenth and fourteenth. That'll be a, a decent shot of bringing us some moisture. I think it'll have, uh, lean a little more to our south and east, but that'll give us a fair shot at some good moisture. Uh, and then around the twenty second through the twenty fourth, we'll be looking for a storm that uh, will bring that it's expected to bring in a p- pretty good amount of moisture up up here as well what kind of moisture for those first uh, first part of april for, uh, are we looking at rain we're looking at snow if we get it t- uh, tagged here uh, that could be either it, it really april. could be either or uh definitely on the back side it's going to be snow but just depending on where the warm sector where's, where, lines where, where, up where's this switch you were lying about why i said we'd flip the switch in march mid-march and we did we had a nice week of weather uh, oh come on I flipped, hey <laughs> i mean we did say that the store that big snowstorm will be back at the end of march so mm-hmm. but yeah. uh, temp- i mean temperatures the, are going to warm this, up nicely this storm yeah yeah, Justin, this storm is flipping the switch because you haven't had a major, major snow. You're going to get a major the switch, snow. Jay. Yeah. When I hear flipping the, the switch, switch in March, I think like uh, I'm like most people. Oh, we're flipping it to the warm. All right, not flipping it to old man winter. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the yeah, three. And, and what, as Justin, as Justin goes through all this week by week forecast, remember what he's using is the LRC model and. When we show you the graphics of that forecast for the whole Plains area, you can zoom into North Dakota, and I think the, those guys have done that. You can go right into your county, and um, that dashboard is available for you. So if you're a farmer out there, like right there, what you're looking at, if you can see your screen, notice the much warmer than average temperatures. That's forecast for the entire spring into early summer, okay? Okay. But we can break it down to week by week, day by day, and you can have your hands on this. And so that's why if you want it, it's not that big of a cost when you consider what it can do week by week planning like Bridget has talked about. And so you can have that if, you would, if you're would, if you interested. Please contact Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E, Bryce at weather2020.com. He'll take you through it, do a tutorial, show you how to use it, and then there you go. You've got the LRC model and one of the very few in the entire world that can actually have it down to your county at your fingertips. Yeah, so so we should be... I'm not know, a sales guy, but I'll just... Yeah, you're a good sales <laughs> Sounds like, uh, sounds like you'd, you'd be a good one. Uh, no, it'd be great if, if, I, if, if, if I was a farmer or a rancher, Bridget, I mean, you know, the, the key to running a good farm, a good ranch, uh, having good crop, uh, it's... it's it's knowledge. And that, that's a major tool. And, and this is a awesome tool for doing just that. Well, and knowledge is power. Yeah. Right. So that can help you make good business decisions. Every farm needs to be run like a business. So if you are looking at a year where, as you guys were talking about, rain precipitation. Okay. So if we're going to be below average, we're thinking about, do I have to reduce my expectations for bushels on yield? That can affect trading equipment. What I'm buying for crop insurance, if you think some of these severe storms may be hail producers, Mm -hmm. may also change what I'm going to do for some of my corn crop, et cetera. You know, if we look at the derechos that went through South Dakota and Iowa in the last couple of years, you may want to go to short statured corn as as a new variety on your farm or new hybrid. Save money. Save a lot. You can save a lot of money. The goal is to always save money and Mm -hmm. make money. There you go. ROI. All right. So what do we do? We hit on on the April storms. Those were the three main ones. Yeah. Then it looks yeah. like we uh, turn dry towards the end of April into the first few days of May. And then that second week in or the end of the first week into the second week of May, that's our Christmas storm. The one that's about to hit, hit us this again. weekend. Mm-hmm. That's when it'll come back. Now, yeah. obviously, that's and again, that's right around that. What? Seventh through 10th somewhere. Of, of yeah. May. Eighth, ninth, 10th. Yeah. So when that comes back through. Odds are uh, we're going to be on the warm side of that. We might be looking at severe weather, but it could be, again, another prolific um, 
Rainmaker. In fact, on the LRC uh, calendar here, we've got it at 300% of average. So that would be a big rainmaker or at least the potential of a big rainmaker yeah you know uh, it's may. something what, well so what are people doing early early may in the fields bridget it's a, this if we're talking about a potentially a bigger rain system huh. up here in the valley minnesota south dakota people trying to get in the fields i'd imagine that that's going to make some muddy situations and maybe make it hard to get out there that week well we're trying to plant so absolutely um if you have the option if you you know whether you've got tires or tracks you might be making the plan to get track tractors if you are not getting your fertilizer spread you may have to come up with a different plan if you're behind on getting that done. Maybe you're, you're going to a different timing for application, et cetera. Because in that time frame, I think we're still going to be planting a lot of crop. If we're going to be wet for a significant amount of time, there may be some trades on if you're going to a shorter hybrid on your corn. So you don't quite have, have to be out as many days, et cetera. So it's, if we, we'd have to be out quite a long time before we'd start switching those hybrids. But right now, it gives you an idea of what's happening in there. Maybe you were planning kids' graduation in the midst of planting. Well, if it's raining, you'll have that day off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. look forward to it. Uh, and Justin, we had a, I, I just got an email in um, asking to please repeat the April storm dates. You've got that over there, right? Yeah, so the April storm dates. Let me go back. No, these are like, like the, 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 the – this, this doesn't mean – these are the only times you're going to see some rain or bad weather. No, these are the no. significant. Yeah. Keep these, a, get ready for these. Yeah, these are more of the the, the bigger, most likely situations. Uh, the third of April, the around the 9th through the eleventh, the around the fourteenth of April, and then that twenty third through the twenty fifth. And the ones Give that look take, like right? the, yeah. Yeah, about a couple mm-hmm. a day or two. Okay. Uh, th- the more substantial ones, that would be. Oh, where was it? Looks like just after mid month. Yeah, really just after mid mid month. There's one at the end of the first week that would be that ninth and ten that would kind of be a, a maybe situation if we get it or if it goes just south. But then towards that third, that third week would be a a, a good one. And then going into May. That first, uh, it looks like, like we were saying, that's 7th through the 10th, somewhere in that first week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then May quiets down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, May should dry out. I just got a tweet from uh, uh, North Dakota uh, uh, Weather Service Grand Forks. Interested in stormy weather? Join our join our app. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got a good one. I think we're good. Big man. brother is listening. <laughs> yeah. aye, aye, aye. Um, let's go to Matthew in Minneapolis. Hey, Matthew J. Thomas Show, what's up? Hey, question for uh, Gary, but uh, first, uh, I'm with you, Jay, on the uh, Dean on the flip and the switch. I mean, that accuracy right there, that's terrible. I <laughs> yeah, listen, I know who this is. Listen here, bud. <laughs> <laughs> you, may want to, you may want to think about if you want to keep him on this or not, but no, we love you. Um, no, serious, serious question, though, because I'm a big believer in this, Gary, um, and I got turned on to this, obviously, by uh, Dean and Justin, but why, why is it that the other – meteorologists around the country, and forgive me if this has already been asked, but why is it that, you know, even in our region, for crying out loud, won't buy into this? It just seems like the accuracy is so high, and is it just a matter of, you know, you can't teach old dog new tricks, or are they just that skeptical, or, or what is it? it? It's something like that, but the thing is, let's say you line up 100 meteorologists. They're going to want to see it themselves. You can tell them that the weather pattern is cycling, but until they literally experience it themselves, I don't blame them for just not buying in unconditionally. You know, it's it, it's something you do have to experience and see, and and then you start to get validation. They could have a good thirty minute meeting with Dean, Justin, or myself, and we would be able to showcase them so many examples over and over again. Maybe they would start learning. But it's taken people years. Uh, one friend of mine who's part of our company, Brett. Uh, Anthony down in Tyler, Texas, he's the chief meteorologist down there. I showed it to him, and it took about eight, nine, ten years later when the light bulb went off, and he was like, oh, my goodness, I see it. I see it. Jeremy Nelson in Savannah, Georgia, about a year later, he's like, oh, my gosh. It came, it, it came into – I see it. And then you have, you have Jay Thomas, who's like – 
I still don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see it now. But, uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like. Remember those pictures that were all the craze back in the '90s, where you just had to like look through them to see the picture. I uh, had to look at it long yeah, enough until drive it you nuts. You're like, oh my god, I see it now. That's kind of what this is, is when it comes to uh, folks that are uh, in the world of weather meteorologists. It's just they they, they they've got to look. They've right. got to really look harder and look through it and really see it. And then they're going to see it, and well, understand it, and get it. That's totally a thing too, because I mean, I was the same way when Dean first uh, talked to me about this whole LRC I'm like oh great my mm-hmm. my, my first boss he's he's on foo dust this is going to be interesting <laughs> see how it goes and you know you start seeing some well, examples and you're like hey I, I can't jump on board with yeah. this I have a whole career's worth of credibility I can't just throw that away because of this and you start seeing some like some a big examples college debt that I listen to these people in college <laughs> they were all wrong they're all wrong but but you see the examples and then you start making the forecasts and you see the mm. patterns and they come back through and you're like man th- th- this is definitely something right. well i remember the and first Justin, year you guys were yeah. uh, with us I-, I remember when we were at the old WDAY building you had all these papers i mean the walls were just covered and I'm like, well, what the hell are you guys doing? Uh, and it's wallpapering. Like you were looking at the patterns. Yeah, wallpapering. You were looking at the patterns. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, as Justin, hey, Justin knows he, he's went through this with the, a few different people. But like we said, if you're just joining us, this storm that's coming towards you that's going to produce, you know, it, it, the track of the storm is going to decide whether you get two feet of snow. And whether you get five or six inches of snow, there's, a, there's still questions on the track, but the storm is going to be there. In the first cycle, it snowed on November 9th and 10th. In the second cycle, it snowed, it rained, and you had the ice storm, December 23rd to 27th, a tremendous amount of precipitation, 2.83 inches liquid. Cycle three, February 8th and 9th, 49 hundredths of an inch, and you had one and a half inches of snow, and now this is cycle four. 45 days apart, you can't make this up. You had a blizzard on January 13th. Michael, pull up Fargo. that graphic real just, quick about the blizzard. Yeah. The comparison yeah, show the blizzard. There we graphic. go. Yeah. So on the left is January 13th. You had a blizzard. On the right is February 27th. When you guys were having a little blizzard that morning, I'm like, huh, when, when? I even said on February 27th, when's the last time you had a blizzard? So I Googled Blizzard Fargo. And it came out 45 days earlier right there. And they looked the same. So I took the picture. So there is an example there. Here in Golden, Colorado, where Weather 2020 is located, we had 21 inches of snow just a few days ago. 45 days before that, we had two inches of snow in January. 45 days before that, we had um, December 13th, January 26th. We had December 13th. And then... 45 days before that, at the beginning of this pattern, October 29th, we had the largest first snow in Denver's history. The largest first snow in Denver's history and the recent 21-inch to 50-inch snowstorm are directly related through the LRC. The Fargo blizzards, the storm approaching you. And again, you can't make this up. There's only one way to predict these storms, and we are sharing it with you here. So, and, and I've got friends that I can't force them to learn about it. I've been trying to show it to them, but they don't even want me to talk about it. But they will say, I'll give you that one. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Well, and after a thousand, I'll give you that one. So I'm like, Justin, you have the same experience, right? Yeah, I got the same experience with a buddy of mine. He's like, I'm, I'm not quite ready to jump on board with this, but the amount of, yeah. I'll give you that ones are, yeah, that looks really up. similar. Yeah. It's piling up. But another example on top of those ones that you had just given there, Gary, is look, is look at the West Coast. How many atmospheric river events have we seen on the news where they're talking about all the flooding going on over in California where they get this barrage, these two or trios of storms that rip in off the Pacific and they get this atmospheric river event. What do you know? Why is it happening every 45 days? And next year, it could, not, I don't want to say next year, but start of the new cycle, it could end up it being totally 60 f- days or 50 days or right. whatever. Or those storms might um, not even exist. All right, let's go to, uh, we got right. time. Let's jump into May. What, what do we got for May, guys? So where do we leave off in May? Uh, that first, so first week in May, 7th through the 10th, that's our Christmas storm cycling back. That will be the biggest storm of the month in May. And then it looks like the rest of the month until possibly the end, uh, the tail end, uh, oh, sure. is, is yeah, pretty, is pretty dry. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, there's a couple of minor opportunities, but I don't see anything too crazy in the forms of a widespread storm uh, coming through. Uh, that would be the 24th. 
right around the 24th through the 26th, and then the... Which is right around Memorial Day. <laughs> 30th and 31st. And, uh, you know, a couple of those storms, they, they might come as two waves of energy, where you get one wave that rips through the northern plains, and then you get the main body of the storm that goes through the southern plains. There, there's a possibility, like in past cycles, where it just comes out as one wave. But I, I would expect that it'll start to uh, lift a little further north into our area. I just don't think it's going to be too crazy of a, of a of a rainmaker for us. You know, obviously some localized areas might see some decent rains, but nothing overly widespread. All right. Want to dive into June, or you want to wait till after the break? Well, let's you know, hit. We, uh, got, we got a minute. Yeah, uh, let's hit. It's 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 yeah. It's my show. I can take a break whenever we want. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to follow the clock. <laughs> You're adorable. It's coming up on the bottom of the arm. We need to take a break. We don't need to do anything. Let's do June. All right. So June, uh, around the 6th through the 9th or the 7th through the 9th, uh, that would be a, a window to keep an eye on right at the end of the uh, first week of June. Uh, if you go back towards cycle one, that's that storm that came through just before uh, Halloween that brought the, what was it, six to nine inches of snow west of the valley. Okay. Yes. So that'll be one to keep an eye on. It'll kind of be like one of those maybe systems because it never really reappeared. And Well, it came through. It didn't produce as much as it did in the second or third cycle. Right. But that would be a highlighted area. But June is looking pretty dry outside of that first uh, that first week until you head towards the end of June. And that would be right around uh, the 24th. 1st through the 23rd, 22nd through the 24th, uh, that again will fall in line with that Christmas storm, and that'll uh, be one to keep an eye on for severe weather up yeah, here. That, okay. that could be a big so severe weather. our June cruise night, third Thursday of the month, Pretty you might be good. dodging hailstones. You might. Well, it looks like it might be. Third at, Thursday is what's the date? Uh, 20th. Oh, that's before it. Third Thursday of June. Mm-hmm. It's 20th. You okay, got, yep. so we're good. You're good. Should yep. be good. Should be good. All right. All I'll, right. Believe me, as long as I stay away. Yeah, well, yeah, Dean's not allowed at cruise night. Dean's not allowed within a 10-mile radius of any event I'm at because if he shows up, we could have blue skies and we'll we'll end up with hail and tornadoes because Dean showed up. (laughs) So he's just not allowed. And honestly, when it comes to CLRC, when when I'm traveling for rides, especially like when we got to get on a plane and go somewhere, it's thousands and thousands of dollars to go film. I'm always talking to Dean weeks in advance, even before we set it up. Hey, we're looking at these dates. We're going to Phoenix, or we're going to here, or we're going here. And I'll check with Dean first, and if it's like a no-go, then I'll let the production group look, pick some other dates, man. That's that's how much I, I, I trust this 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 LRC. Even when we uh down in Phoenix in February, uh, how often was I in there asking you? Oh, know? yeah. And it, I, it, I it all worked out. You'll, you'll have great weather. It looks good. <laughs> and well, how did all of his predictions turn out using the LRC for those? Uh, they actually, it was it was dead on the money. The only one, the only LRC prediction I'm not uh, on board with him is is uh, the two wet days down in Florida coming up. But, uh, yeah, other, than that, <laughs> yeah, other, other than that, he's been dead on. All right, it's uh, 3:31. That is uh, 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 a. Uh, uh, that is a Zeus of sales and rentals time check, by the way. Uh, hey, we want to thank the sponsors for the spring summer LRC Weather Outlook 2024, Jiffy Lube of Fargo, Plains Ag for those who demand more, and also uh, the Money Farm. And of course, uh, uh, Weather 2020, more with uh, the CEO of uh, Weather 2020 and founder of the LRC, Gary Lezak. When we come back, also Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki, Meteorologist Justin Storm, Ag Director uh, Bridget Riedel, and myself will we'll break down the rest of the summer. And then in the four o'clock hour, we'll open up the phone lines and the emails, and I got a ton of them already come in. People with your specific dates. Hey, I got a wedding on this date, or I'm going here on this date. We're gonna get to all those. All right, again, 701-293-9000. Email studio at wdayradionow.com. You can watch this on our YouTube channel. Uh, it is WDAY 970 AM. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell on the channel there. And you can watch that when we're talking graphics and all that. You can actually see the graphics. And we got a chat room going in there uh, as well. All right, 332 more of the spring, summer LRC weather outlook special when we come back on the Jay Thomas Show. When you buy a Subaru, you're not just buying a car. You're buying safety, value, and trust for all the ones you love. That's why you see so many Subarus on the roads around you. Check out the new model selection available today, and be sure to ask about special low rates available now through April 1st during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Stop in at Muscatel Subaru, just off exit 1 in Moorhead. Subaru, built to last. 
Attention experienced senior level techs with five years of experience. Northern Plains Equipment, a certified Case IH dealer in Minot, North Dakota, is looking for you. Join the team and perform quality maintenance and repairs on all types of agricultural equipment. Northern Plains Equipment is a value-led, 100% employee-owned company, offering competitive wages, benefits, and job training. If you're ready to work in a great environment with great people, apply at plainsag.com. Northern Plains Equipment, Inc., proud to be an equal opportunity employer. It's what? It's unpredictable. It's back. Shooting Star Casino presents Coors PRCA Championship Rodeo. Friday and Saturday, March 22nd and 23rd. 7.30 each night in the Fargo Dome. Top professional contestants from across the nation going head-to-head with the award-winning stock of Mossberger Rodeos in seven head slam and bone jamming events. And dance each night at Cowboy Jacks. Get tickets at the Fargo Dome box office or Ticketmaster.com. The Coors PRCA Championship Rodeo. March 22nd and 23rd in the Fargo Dome. Where eight seconds is a lifetime. Sponsored by Holiday Inn Express and Corwin Ram of Fargo. Have you heard this saying, you can't teach speed? Well, at Jiffy Lube of Fargo, they can. Getting your vehicle back on the road and game ready for a trip across town or across the country. Like any good ninth inning team, they finish strong. Vacuuming the interior and cleaning the exterior windows. Ask about the complimentary top-off service between oil changes. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, with three locations for your speed and convenience. And no appointment needed. When Cynthia came to TurboTax, she had just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Mostly sunny, breezy, and cool for this afternoon. We'll have highs in the upper 20s with a north wind around 10 to 20. Increasing clouds overnight tonight as we drop down to a low in the upper teens to near 20. And winds go lighter out of the north-northeast at 5 to 10. Clouds thicken up on Thursday and light snow overspreads the area by late in the day. We'll have highs close to freezing. Snow continues Thursday night into early Friday morning with about 1 to 2 inches of snow likely. From the WDAY Skywatch Weather Center, I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki. Three thirty six, Jay Thomas show. Hey, if you haven't, um, good song, Ronnie. It's a great song. If you haven't tasted North Dakota sweet crude or uh, sweet crude orange, you're uh, you're missing out. North Dakota sweet crude, smooth cinnamon and spice flavor, sweet crude orange. Same smooth finish with a splash of orange, and they have a tasting coming up. Actually, uh, what is the date today? The twenty. I think they're pa- actually their tastings are done now. Um, at least their March tastings. They should have some more coming up here. Uh, but you know what? You you can get North Dakota Sweet Crude at your favorite uh, liquor store. Just uh, stop in there and ask for it by name. And uh, don't forget to go to their website. Uh, that's uh, CrudeSpirits.com. They've got a ton of recipes. I believe more than sixty drink recipes. Um, Crude Leprechaun, Orange Crush, Dakota Sweet Lemonade, Crude Apple. Dean's had them all. Says they're delicious. Yes. <laughs> Having one right now. Yeah. <laughs> Crude Leprechaun was your nickname. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. Oh, 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 man, I know my rib wow. shot up. Otherwise, yeah. I'd give you wow. one. Very. Hey. <laughs> Minnesota or South Dakota, you can also buy it online at crudespirits.com. All right, what are we doing now? We're going into, uh, we did, ju- okay, just recap. Is June going to be above or below average for temperatures, guys? Uh, uh, every month. Is, uh, every month every, is above. Uh, every month will be, yeah. as every a whole, month will we've be got, above average. As a whole, we'll have a little cool, sure. you know, but a- as a whole, yeah, all spring, all summer, we're looking at above, above normal temperatures. Same thing for precip? Uh, in in the valley and eastward, yes, okay. and southward. But as the further west you go, oh, the further west you go, and this is not good for our ag community, um, that you will have drier, drier than normal conditions the further west and northwest you go. And how is Bridget? Has it gotten any better out west with the drought? Uh, you know, to be honest, they had more snowfall in some instances than we have this winter. Okay. They got a little bit more moisture. They are no tillers, so their plant material is holding that 
that moisture into the soil, they're probably okay for the moment. But Western North Dakota is historically always drier than we are. No, oh, there you go. All right, what are we hitting now? July? Is it July time? I think we got we're done with June. July. Yeah, I think we're done with June. Yep. Yeah, you hit. Uh, right. Yeah, we hit May. You hit June. Uh, big spike uh, at the end of June, that third week, and then July. Go ahead. July Just looks like another dry month. I think this is going to be one of our one of those long stretches, as it usually is, where you don't really get as many widespread heavy rains, especially across most of the state of North Dakota. But there are a couple of key dates where we could get in a, I guess you could call it a timely rain for some of us within the valley. We're getting a lot of pool use this summer, aren't we? I love it. Yes, man. Yes. Uh, One of those is going to be coming in uh, about the 8th and 9th of July, and then a possibility on the 14th of July. However, I I, I think that one will probably end up missing around us, and then uh, again, right around the uh, 22nd to 24th. Again, that would be another possible severe weather okay. uh, possibility. How's uh, the fourth one? Uh, you got the dates on that. I've got that. Yep. Okay. Well, let's. Are we in? Ju- All yeah. right. So yeah. there we go. All right. So let's go back to key dates real quick. So we we kind of skipped over Memorial Day. You you did touch on it a little bit, Justin. And I kind of included the 25th through the 27th. I believe Memorial Day is on the 27th. So I included that weekend before. Um, could see a wet start to Memorial Day weekend, but then things oh, should improve. A surprise. Shocking. Yeah, things should yeah, improve afterwards. Uh, Fourth of July. We're looking at uh, 80s. Uh, and maybe, maybe uh, a, a, an isolated storm or two, but no big storm in the offing for uh, the Fourth of July weekend. Mm-hmm. How about that third Thursday in July? That would be second cruise night for West Fargo. Yeah. Well, let's see when that's is the 18th the 18th should be fine yep love it just fine loving this loving it all yeah. right let's go to august Ooh. which is we fest uh, when is we fest sturgis first, first first through the third Ooh, we'll get to it Ooh, and us i'm gonna <laughs> oh yeah well we're gonna be expecting a big storm to be ripping through that the the end of the first week of august and so no surprise so, there either so we fest, we fest. No, that's first through the third uh, again, it like Justin said, after, it should be after should be we just fest. after we fest. So we fest should be good. Uh, it could get that storm at the tail end of we fest, but the start of it looks good with 80s and 90s. Yes. Oh so, wow! So it'll be warm. I I got a possibility of a maybe system coming in around the first or second. I wouldn't really lay money on that. Uh, the better bet would be right at the end of the first week, so around that fifth to seventh, sixth to seventh. Uh, that, that could of be a big August, one too. and that that could that be a big, could be a big one. Again, that's going to be our uh, Christmas time storm um, that'll come through so that could uh, be another big one all right so are we looking at a, a summer this year with a lot of 90s upper 80s and into the 90s like yes. we had a couple couple summers yeah, ago i'm sweating so. already okay it's gonna, it's gonna be a warm one okay a couple of questions over here you guys sure, and yeah. I, I know we've touched on this but we did have a farmer message us and say what's the one thing that what's the reoccurring event that drives the lrc just a quick recap on that and that is gary the recurring event that what happens is every year in October and November, the weather pattern sets up. So this fall, a brand new pattern that's never happened before will set up and start cycling. So that's when it all sets and recycles and starts up. So, uh, but I don't know if that answers that question, Bridget, but, but it, that's when it starts. That's what they're looking for. And then a second one that I just got, the Hongo Tongo Volcano eruption back in January 2022. Oh. What effects might that have had on the LRC cycle, if any? Oh. Yeah, probably no effects. There's a, you know, Mount Pinatubo back in 1992 might have been a little bit stronger. That really slightly cooled the earth a little bit for a couple of years. Uh, this one hasn't had that kind of an impact, but it doesn't affect the LRC per se, but it might if there's enough of you know stuff up in the sky uh, it might cool the earth by a, a degree or so so for a couple of years that has not been the case with that one i don't think it was strong enough i also just had to answer what's we fest but that's a farmer in iowa who oh, just oh, was like, yeah. what are you people talking about up there <laughs> just said, we don't know no, we, we it's 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 a wheat festival we just call it we fest uh, yeah we fest. Uh, did we touch on the, hold, the hold, end hold, of august hold, hold on a second uh Every email, of everybody's talking, uh, Bridget, early planting last week of April, but yeah. what about a May frost? Oh, it's still possible, but you're going to want to pick and choose. 
what you're putting in the ground first. If you have soybeans in first, which many people do, what stage are they going to be at? Growing point for soybeans comes above ground. You have a better chance of freezing that soybean off. Whereas with corn, your growing point stays below ground longer. Same thing with wheat. You'd Wheat will tolerate a frost much better. So you're going to pick and choose what you think that may be. And hopefully the closer we get these guys, you're going to say whether it's going to be a hard frost well, and it, or it, not. It looks like our last frost should be late April. Which is normal. We yeah, can have right. a, And it mm-hmm. might not be 17 degrees for 12 hours. Right. That makes a difference. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, another email. Uh, Gary, this one's for you. Uh, in papers published by the CIA under code name Indigo Sky Fold. Oh, okay. The Air Force and CIA directly claim they plan on controlling the weather by 2025 using stratospheric uh, aerosol injection. Does your LRC model count for a confirmed uh, continuous government aerosol injection and geoengineering? Have fun with that one. And there's a lot of uh, uh, oh, chemtrails. Chemtrails are on here today. Yeah, chemtrails. There, there is, there is no legitimacy to that. There, twenty twenty five, maybe by twenty two twenty five, two hundred years from now. I don't know. Maybe some of that might advance, but uh, the atmosphere is so it's so thin in some respects when you look at it as a, as a big picture. But then weather is so so significant. If you see an airplane fly by a big cumulus cloud or even a thunderstorm, a cumulonimbus cloud, that airplane is going to be a little speck flying by. You know, it, it literally is like a grain of sand. And so what we what can we put into the stratosphere? And the stratosphere is above the troposphere. So if you know the layers of the atmosphere, you have the troposphere where we experience all of our weather on Earth. Mm-hmm. And then you have the stratosphere where it actually warms up and it's a stable layer. So I personally don't believe anything can be done up there that would be of any significance that would control the weather down here. And then we have to be very careful. Let's say it does. And then you have a tornado that might hit an open field, but instead, now that you controlled it, maybe it moved over a city. Uh, you know, you might have some bad effects from from results of that. But I I don't think anything can be done. The atmosphere is too too broad for us to impact significant events. Yeah, we're, we're not we're, we're not God. We're a far hey. long way away from a oh, type 1 civilization. Oh, you okay. can watch a really terrible film called oh. Geostorm with okay. uh, Gerard Butler. Or you can watch Sharknado. Okay. Sharknado 1 through 10. Okay, so the Red River Valley Fair, of course, you guys all know it's a major major event. I'm getting a lot of emails. Yep, 28 through uh the, the 30. 14th. No, it's we're doing it this year. We we've changed it. We are doing it three weekends this year. Yes. So oh. The bigger. first the first weekend is June twenty eighth through June thirtieth. All right, I've got the eighth. Okay, I've got eighties cooling to the upper seventies during that time period. I've also have the best chance of rain being the eighth through the eleventh of July. Okay, my next because the next weekend for the fair is July fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay, and uh, maybe uh, just a few, nothing, nothing organized. Okay, and the last weekend of the fair this year is July eleventh, twelfth, and fourteenth. So maybe the eleventh, but it should start to dry out after that. Okay, all right, there you go. That wipes out a bunch of emails. All right, where are we at? Are we in, are, did we I go? Think we were all, touch we, on the end of August. Okay, that's what yep. it was. So we touched about that. That. The, the big storm, the, the big beginning. storm, right at the uh, end of the first week of August, and then it looks like the middle of the month is going to dry out. Uh, there'll be a couple minor opportunities in there, but nothing too big too storm crazy. at the beginning of August. L- yeah, looks okay. dry the middle of the month, and then that third week of August, uh, we'll start to see things picking up. A couple opportunities around the twenty third and twenty eighth, and nope. that's that's going to affect us with some of our farm shows because. Last year, if you think about going down to Baltic for Egg PhDs Day at the end of July, you all said plan for hot. So you over there, Mr. Redhead, mm-hmm. you're just going to want to start bathing in sunscreen now to be prepared. I'm not going. You might want to hydrate well. Be a boy the bubble. Yeah. I, I, I about died last year in Baltic. Literally, I don't literally. want to do it again. And the yeah. end of July does look dry. And hot, apparently. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll get into, like, we have Dakota Fest Farm Progress Show in Iowa. And from the looks of things, what you're telling me, we are still looking at a fairly dry cycle still a lot of warm right a lot so of heat. so bridget let, let's let's kind of focus uh, i'll give you the spike in in precip and and tell me how this relates to our ag community is this would this be considered timely rain so we've got um let's start with may 
Uh, so early May, mm-hmm. um, with that first week in May, we've got the potential for a significant precip. In the, uh, in, the, in the midst of planning. Yep. Maybe a little bit towards the end of May. Hopefully May, that, everything is planted. Okay. Nice mellow rain right on top of that. And then, your yard, folks. And then <laughs> that right around that first week in June, then we dry That's out. Good. Yep. And then another big spike in precip towards the end of June. Which could possibly be about the time we want that to be on wheat, depending on our planting dates. But okay. that wouldn't hurt for the wheat crop. Then Always we, good for sugar beets at that point. Then we dry out for that first part of July, maybe a little bit towards, I think Justin said, the after 4th of July, a uh, little spike there and a little spike towards the third week. But Ju- July looks, for like, fungicide a, July for looks like July as a whole looks like a pretty dry okay. month. Because we, we we'd be spraying white mold, uh, sugar beet, excuse me soybeans and sunflowers we probably don't have to worry about that quite as much and that helps us manage our cercospora and sugar beets because we yeah. tend to have a bunch of disease then okay. hey michael why don't you throw that graphic up of the okay. uh moisture outlook for the the, yeah. the the area too while we do this sir and then a spike in early august so we'd probably be could be some heavy we, rain then it could be so um so two things that'll affect if you have wheat that's headed out will it lodge because you get the heavy rain on it hopefully right. it's you know it's at fill and things are going smoothly then in August, getting some rain f- to finish out your, your soybeans before you start harvest, uh, usually not long into September, and then also the corn crop will take it well. And outside of the first storm in August, and c- correct me if I'm wrong, Justin, there's a, it looks like a pretty dry month outside of maybe a little spike there towards the end of the second or third week. July through August looks dry. The, the biggest peak, the most significant moisture would come the end of the first week of August. And then there's a couple of minor systems, I, I get like 10 days into July, uh, around 20 days into July, and then about 20 days into August. You know what it sounds roughly. like to me is, is y'all, y'all need to get, uh, get in your vehicles and get over to hot spring spas and pool tables too, and get your <laughs> yes. splash super pools. I, yes. I'm serious. I know Vinny's got a great sale great going idea. on. Hey, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, good question here. Um, starts out great stuff, uh, guys. Is there or has anyone kept track of the monetary savings or revenue generating enhancing effects that have occurred based on knowing the timing and severity of these weather events with the LRC? Gary's got a good answer yeah. for that. Well, <laughs> uh, quite a few things. First of all, our, our, our LRC model, our data, uh, it, it, it's uh, the patent pending model has data for high temperatures, low temperatures, rain, snow, other parameters that businesses can tap into. So as I said on here, the LSE cracks the code of the big atmospheric jigsaw, but a business such as, let's say you're a car wash business and you want to know, and you have the past year or two or five years of sales, and you know that when it's in the teens and snowing, you'll have 25 cars come through, right, that week. That's it. And then the next week, it's in the 50s, and it's dried out, and you have 1,000 cars come through. So you build your sales data uh, in inputs, and then you take our data, the only predictive model in the world that actually predicts these things, and you can predict how much Windex you'll need, how much you know supply and demand for other products, you know, how many cars are going to come through, staffing, so supply, demand, and staffing for the car wash industry, for Home Depot and all their weather-sensitive products, and for the seed companies in the agriculture. I mean, Bridget could probably talk to that. Getting this data into your analytics and making profitable decisions weeks and months in advance will be impacting. We've had one of our companies that we've been partnered with is an animal health company, and they say it's influenced their bottom line by 3%. 3% of a $4 billion That's dollar company. That's, That's huge. One, $120 million. That is so crazy. It's going to have impacts as we go forward. Um, Let's uh, let me grab Jeff here. Jeff's been waiting well. Jeff, you're up. Uh, Jay Thomas. Show. Yeah, just a quick question here. I don't know if we touched on it. I didn't catch the whole program. but uh, Shame on you. So Rib Fest, June. I know, right? <laughs> mm. June, them grandkids always get in the way. Oh, yeah, I hear you, buddy. June, uh, I, I got June uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh yeah, Rib Fest. We we skipped over Rib Fest, big event. Yes, 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 yes. Hey, hey, Jay, this is a good test. I want you to go to the website weather twenty twenty dot com. Okay, we have a product called the three month ahead. We're going to have the full six month version in less than a month. But right now, it's three months ahead, and June happens to be three months from now. So go to weather twenty twenty dot com. 
scroll down a little bit. If you're on a remote mobile device, just pan down and you will see the June forecast right now for those dates for highs, lows, rain, and snow. Where, where? And so that product is going to come. Scroll uh, down. Go, pan down to the. Do you see it? Scroll down. Oh, this one. Oh, there. Scroll past my video. Scroll up. Is, my, see my computer's messed up. It's not letting me scroll. So that's okay. I've got uh, June what? Six, seventh, and eighth. June. Yeah. Uh, where is it? Temperatures in the seventies. Yeah. Looks like mid. Uh, looks like upper seventies. And. Um, okay, I got weather 2020. Yeah, if you scroll down, you'll see past okay. my video, you will see the three month forecast. Oh, and yeah, that's June. Oh, you, you got to click on that. Okay, now I see. When you when you see the and map, then, click on your town or whatever, or your so county. Looks like yeah, a click on your town. Chance of precip. There's precip in, in, in the forecast for that weekend. Right. right. Can I use that any time? Yeah. What was that? Can they use that all the time? Yeah, but it only goes out three months for now. But Gary is rolling out right. that global predictor, which he'll have on his website, right. um, which you, you can blast it out any day yeah, you want one, throughout the that'll year. That'll be out. Yeah, that'll be out in one month, and it'll go out six months ahead. And it's going to help brides plan. It's going to help you plan for your event. You'll know what it's going to look like and prepare for any rain or snow possible. Wow, that is really cool. Now, right. does this show pre, because I don't see precip on here. Scroll down. Click on, look on the bottom right. You'll see Oh, pre there you go. So you can go, go do it, do it. Pre oh, oh, oh wow. Yeah, I've got it. That is really How cool. Is that cool? June. How do I get a different month? You know, like you have to, now. you have to, you have to, you'll, well, it'll be a product for like a real low cost. Okay. It might, you might, might buy be it. five bucks. Oh, got it. Yeah. It might be just five bucks a month, but that's going to come out. We're almost ready for it because right now it's showing too much precipitation. And I made an adjustment oh. where it's showing too little precipitation. So we're getting equal ground and it's going to be an app. It'll be out in one month. It's going to be called, as Dean said, yep, the shows, global the predictor. predictor. Thanks, uh, Jeff. You keep cutting us off. I'm going to let you roll, brother. <laughs> it's uh, 355. All right. Um, Glenn, you're going to have to hang on. We're going to start taking uh, requests here uh, for specific dates after the top of the hour. News got about five minutes left. Uh, anything else we need to uh, get in this hour? So let me real quick recap. Sounds like we're going to have a, a pretty good above average temperature wise spring and summer. Yeah, we'll have. It, it'll be a warm. It'll be a warm, warm to hot summer. A warm to hot summer. Great and, for lakes country. And your splash super pools. Go get them. Yep. And also <laughs> um, precip a little bit above. Uh, it'll be about average. About average. Pretty close to average. Within okay. the valley. Yeah. Okay. Now, Once again, you go west, it drops off. Yeah. They might be looking at drought conditions out west. Okay. West of the valley. How about into the lakes area? Lakes, yeah. uh, pretty similar to what we're going to have. Th right. That sweet spot's going to be from, say, Minnesota into the central U.S. <laughs> That's where the sweet spot will be for the best probability of above average rain. Oh, okay. I don't want that in my backyard. <laughs> all right. All right. So here's the deal. We, we have got a lot of emails to get to. Yes. Uh, people have been sending me emails all afternoon uh, wanting specific dates. Uh, we do that in the last hour. So when we come back, 701-293-9000, I have an event I'm going to or I have this going on and this day. We're going to try to, these guys are going to try to nail it for you. Uh, 701 293 9000, or you can email me studio at wdayradionow.com. Bridget, I know you got to get rolling or you can hang out. You got anything you want to? Uh, pastures for those who are here listening and you're hearing July and August are looking more dry. Pasture management, watch your grazing rotations because you don't want to overgraze early on. You may not get those pastures to rebound later in the summer. Oh, I suppose if it's hot, yeah, it's not yep. coming back. Yep, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, 701 293 calls rolling in here. All right, we'll do. Um, I'll do your prediction. Well, it's not even predictions. So we're going to tell you. We're going to give you your forecast. There you go. Woo woo. <laughs> going to get your forecast. <laughs> All right. Other places right. will give you predictions. We're going to we're going to give you your forecast, man. We're going to do that next. Seven zero one two nine three nine thousand. Email studio at wdyradionow dot com. I want to tell you about the guys at Northstar Financial. They're just like my listeners. They like to work with people who've worked hard, 
Come into their office with mud on your boots. They work with guys like you all the time. No stiff offices, totally laid back. you got to give these guys a call. you probably heard of them. They grew up here, actually. John Annis, Chad Zimmer, Jay Stibby. John's with me. John, tell us a little bit about who you guys are and what you do. Thanks, Jay. Uh, we're really a group of uh, friends that operate a business like a family. We've been doing this for over 25 years each, and our goal is just to help people take things that are pretty complicated and make it real easy. We love that, man. Yeah. If yeah. it's easy, we love it. Right, right. You guys have been doing it for years. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we, we try to place a number on it, but each of us, like I say, over 25 years we've been doing this. So we've seen a lot of different things in this market uh, when it comes to investing. And, you know, I, I, I hope there's nothing we haven't seen, you know, that comes up at us. But, you know, really it's pretty simple. Everybody's looking for some direction. Yeah. You know, the folks we work with, whether it's retirement Maybe it's trying to save for college, sure. or a lot of people say, hey, I, I really want this next dream ride. How do I get there? Yeah, exactly. I think we all we all want the same thing, and you can get us there, right? Yeah, yeah. Got to give these guys a call at North Star Financial. You'll actually enjoy talking to them. Real easy to find them. Just Google North Star Financial. You'll find them there in West Fargo. If your job is just a job, reboot your 2024 with a career at Thurlds and Ethanol. Be part of a work family that operates one of the largest ethanol plants in America. Clean, state-of-the-art facility that is leading North Dakota's energy revolution. From family-friendly policies like four days on, four days off, exceptional compensation, benefits, bonus, and incentives. Positions start at seventy-five dollars to 80000 per year. Bring a strong work ethic and Thurlson Ethanol will train you on the job. Apply online right now at thurldsonethanol.com. More weather, more news. The biggest team in Fargo-Moorhead is right here. AM 970 and FM 93.1. WDAY, Fargo-Moorhead, West Fargo. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker. WDAY News First. Time now is 4 o'clock on this Wednesday afternoon and 26 degrees outside our South Fargo studios under fair skies. Winds out of the north at 16 miles an hour. News this hour is brought to you by Lakeland Dock and Lift. Order your new dock or lift now and have it ready for spring delivery. Lakeland Dock and Lift is the area's number one flow dealer. A proposal that would raise the minimum wage in Minnesota to $15 an hour initially and later to $20 an hour is advancing in the state Senate. The Labor Committee passed the measure yesterday, allowing it to be part of a larger employment bill that will be considered later in the session. The proposal would raise the minimum wage for all businesses to $15 an hour this year and mandate annual increases uh, for each year after that of $1.25 until the rate reaches $20 an hour in 2028. The state's current minimum wage for large businesses is $10.85, while the minimum for small businesses is $8.85. The Minnesota legislature is also considering a new state law that would overrule the new rideshare minimum wage ordinance passed by the city of Minneapolis. Uber and Lyft uh, say they're leaving the Minneapolis area market on May 1st because of the new city ordinance. Governor Tim Wall says he typically doesn't support overriding local ordinances, but says it might make sense in this case. The Minnesota Twins' home opener April 4th will include a tribute to the two police officers and a firefighter paramedic shot and killed while responding to a domestic call in Burnsville last month. The Twins say there will be a special starting lineup including first responders from Burnsville and Dakota County. Also featured a bagpipe performance and a military flyover before the game. And a spokesperson for Gun Owners of America says the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Institutes of Health are skewing data to support their gun control proposals. They're running surveys and, and you know, numbers and stuff and trying to keep in numbers, trying to keep the numbers to, to basically uh, say that, that gun laws do work. Stephen Williford says the public agencies are using tax dollars to promote policies which infringe on Second Amendment rights. Williford appeared on the flags, What's on Your Mind? Tom Tucker, WDAY and WDAYRadioNow.com. More of the Jay Thomas Show coming up. 
say cheese, and pepperoni. Because every Wednesday is Schlotzky's buy one, get one free pizza of cheese, pepperoni, or any other flavor of pizza or flatbread. So make the middle of the week taste better with a free pizza at Schlotzky's on Wednesdays when all pizzas are buy one, get the second one free. Signature sourdough, fresh toppings. Now that's a win-win pizza. Make your Wednesday lunch and dinner plan to go to Schlotzky's. It's a great deal any way you slice it. Schlotzky's, it's a mouthful. From ABC News, I'm Lindsay Davis, anchor Prime, streaming weeknights on ABC News Live. A federal appeals court heard arguments today after blocking a Texas immigration law called SB4 that would have allowed Texas law enforcement to arrest and deport undocumented migrants. Today's arguments come hours after the Supreme Court allowed that law to take effect. Commander Ryan Irutia is with El Paso County Sheriff Patrol. Our department has been very, very fortunate to not have any racial profiling complaints for several years, and we want to maintain that standard because that's a trust we built with El Paso and El Paso has with us. A ruling is expected in the coming days. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he has no choice but to move forward with an invasion of Rafah, despite President Biden calling it a mistake. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Tel Aviv. Israel's Prime Minister doubling down, telling lawmakers here that there is no alternative. A senior Israeli official telling me that Israel believes the last five intact Hamas battalions, plus its leader, are holed up in Rafah. One reason he sees no world in which Israel does not go ahead with this offensive, despite what the president says. The prime minister spoke by phone with House Speaker Johnson and met via video with Senate Republicans. State Department officials say starting today, the U.S. will begin organizing helicopter flights for American citizens from Port-au-Prince, Haiti to the Dominican Republic. This is gang violence continues to escalate in the Caribbean nation. The EPA announcing its most ambitious emission standard for new vehicles, EPA Administrator Michael Regan. These technology standards for model years 2027 through 2032 will avoid more than 7 billion tons of carbon pollution. That's four times the total carbon pollution from the entire transportation in the year 2021. The Fed is keeping interest rates unchanged, holding rates steady between five and a quarter and five and a half percent. The Fed chair says interest rates could come down later this year. You're listening to ABC News. I have diabetes. I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I have asthma. I'm at risk, too. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine, a Pfizer vaccine that can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. Your ABC News update is brought to you by Advanced Diesel Repair. Farmers can't afford downtime. Contact Advanced Diesel Repair, located off I-29 Wild Rice Exit. Partly cloudy skies will go mainly cloudy as we head throughout this evening into tonight with a north wind between 10 and 20 miles per hour, lightening up as it switches out of the east-southeast between 5 and 10 miles per hour. We'll drop down to a low in the upper teens and warm back to the lower and mid-30s on Thursday. It's mainly cloudy, a little light snow out west with light wind. A better chance for light and moderate snow comes through Thursday night, exiting Friday morning with 1 to 3 inches of accumulation in higher amounts of the southwest. From the WDAY Skywatch Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Justin Storm. Broadcasting live from the Miller Highlight Studio, this is the Jay Thomas Show on WDAY. About time. There it is. Allman Brothers. Blue Sky. Four oh seven. Jay Thomas Show. That's the Zeus Sales and Rentals time check. Feel the power of Zeus, baby. Uh, grab it and go, or if you want, they will uh, deliver the uh, piece of equipment you need to rent and uh, 
Uh, they'll even pick it up for you. Two locations, Hollywood Lumber Company, Highway 10 and Holly, and here in Fargo, uh, uh, 55th Street and 12th Avenue North. Uh, again, feel the power of Zeus. And, hey, if you're looking for a career change, Morton Buildings, uh, they're your answer. Uh, they are hiring. It's not just a job. It's a career. They're 100% employee-owned. And uh, when you talk to the team at Morton Buildings, they are very excited about their jobs. I'm excited about the bonuses that they can earn just by uh, being safe on the job, completing a project on time. They get 100 hours of bad weather pay. If it's too hot or too cold to work, they get paid for those 100 hours. Morton Buildings, again, employee-owned. Um what else do they do over there? Quarterly bonuses. Um, you can win trips just for doing your job. It's a great company. Why wouldn't you want to join the team at Morton? Just go to mortonbuildings.com slash careers. You'll be glad you did. All right. So it is the uh, last hour of the spring-summer LRC Weather Outlook 2024. And thank you to our sponsors. And that is uh, Jiffy Lube. And the Money Farm. And who's the other one? It's, it popped off my screen now. Plains Ag. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? There yeah. you go. Plains Ag. There you go. All right. So now the last hour, I always love having fun with you folks. Uh, you got the outlook for the summer. Now people have specific dates. Okay, I'm going to be doing this on this date. I'm going here on this date. What's the weather look like? And again, if you go to weather2020.com, you can get all, all this. Get a subscription. It's dirt cheap. I mean, you know. I don't think Gary eats anything other than ramen noodles. This is so cheap. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we have we have different products. So one one thing that I that is is less than a dollar a day. It costs three hundred dollars a year, but I highly recommend it because I'll be the one providing the weekly update every single Monday or Tuesday, uh, and I provide tremendous insights. We show some of the graphics that Dean and Justin are showing, and that's the first thing you can have is these insights allowing you to prepare and plan and be in the know you're in on a secret the lrc then we have this dashboard and the dashboard is where all these graphics and everything that dean and justin are reading off to you right now are just i'm blown away by dean and justin because these guys are telling what the forecast is for may june july august now and they they're looking into the camera and they're talking to you guys as if there's no doubt about it this is going to happen and on some level they're so accurate I, I, they're because the LRC the river of air above us is cycling regularly and it is nearly 100% accurate the storm that is coming towards you early next week that will likely produce 1 foot or more of snow yeah. okay predicted Justin and Dean have been expecting it they've been telling me about it for weeks for months What is the March 23rd, 22nd, 24th version going to be? And and here it is. It rained in this version, freezing rain, a major ice storm just here west in uh, December. And now here it is. It's going to be a snowstorm in March. So there's some limitations. We don't know for sure if it's going to be snow or freezing rain 90 days ahead. But we certainly know the storm is going to be there. And these guys are just being so confident in these forecasts. And they should be. Because that's what we're bringing. We're bringing you this technology. But that dashboard that they're using is also available. You can have that at your fingertips, just so you know. And you can contact Justin and Dean or Bridget. They can help you get it. But our chief solutions officer is Bryce Palmer, B-R-Y-C-E, at weather2020.com. Bryce at weather2020.com. So do that. The other product, again, it's weather 2020 dot substack dot com. I tell you all this because we're you know I'm here to share this information for a fairly low cost. Now bigger organizations that might make a hundred million save a hundred million dollars mitigate their losses, they'll pay a lot more. So you guys can be in on this for a lot less and have that at your fingertips on your farm. You can go down to your county or go down to Argentina and see what the forecast is down in Brazil. So it's a fascinating tool for a fairly low cost. All right, here we go. 701-293-9000. Email studio at WDAYradionow.com or put your uh, request in on our YouTube channel, WDAY 970 uh, AM. There's a chat room set up. Let's get to it. Glenn is in Minnesota. Glenn, you are up on the Jay Thomas Show. What's up, brother? Hey, guys. Appreciate your time. We're having a wedding here on... June 8th, 
Akron Township, Wilkin County. Going to snow? Is it going to rain? Is it going to wind blow us away? What's going to happen? Well, Dean, uh, Dean is uh, looking it up, I believe, right now. Where did he say he was? Wilkin County. Wilkin County. It's Minnesota. What was the date? June 8th. June 8th. Hey. Should have a little uh, bumper music playing in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the, the original Blue Sky with ELO. Yeah. Oh, well, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Get a new computer, Wysocki. Man. You know, he's trying to... Imagine in, in one month, Jay, we're going to have that product out where... You, you can do that right now on weather2020.com yourself. It's June is out. But we're going to have that six-month planner so for brides. Can you imagine just clicking and getting the bride's going to be so, so happy. Oh, exactly. Of mind, you know? Exactly. Um, all right. Well, it looks like... Okay. Uh, Jeez, uh, get some thicker glasses looks, too. Looks wet. <laughs> oh, all that it looks wet, Glenn. Mm-hmm. Right, right around, <laughs> give or take a day or so. There's a, there there will be a system pulling through the area. Sorry, buddy. No. Hey, well, thanks. Man. I think Glenn just flipped you off. I don't blame him. Yeah, but, but, voice. I don't but blame there will him. be a three-hour window where it's perfect. For right, that. exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll sneak it in. Yeah. Hey, uh, Colleen's over at Moorhead. Hello, Colleen J. Thomas Show. Hi. Hey, what do you got? I was wondering um, what the weather will be like in Moorhead on May 18th for I have a graduation open house. Graduation open house, you said? Yeah. May 18th. Justin, you want to take that? Justin, what do you got there, buddy? May 18th. It's kind of a maybe, but it, it looks dry. It looks dry, but it's kind of a maybe. What kind of forecasting is that? You know, maybe, so, so what what it's done over that date in the past cycles, it's been it, it's been every other cycle, and that'll fall on the every other cycle that nothing happens. Okay. All right. How about temperature-wise? Temperature-wise over May? Should be mild. Should be nice. Should be nice. Be nice. Should be in the should be in the seventies. Wonderful. Thanks, Colleen. Appreciate it. Jesse's in Fargo. Jesse J. Thomas show. Yeah. Um, got a vacation plan for June fifth going to Washington, DC. Cancel it. Cancel it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, June fifth in DC? Yep, June fifth in Feels yep. swampy. Oh, oh, well played, Roddy. Oh, rim shot. Well, I don't have my rim shot uh, turned, turned off, off because I got the computer rolling. I see. Uh huh. Gary, you have the dashboard pulled up? Yeah, I'm, I'm calling up the, our new global predictor that will be out soon. But I mean, Washington, D.C. June 5th. June 5th. So I'm just clicking real quick. You'll have this at your fingertips one of these days very soon, within a month. But it has 80 degrees. 77 degrees the day before, 85 degrees the day after. So you know it varies a little bit. That probably means the system's going through. Precipitation on the 5th, it has 16 hundredths of an inch of rain, and it has no snow. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, over, the, over the past of listening to this program, it's, it's really amazing how uh, – how really actually pretty close you guys get. It's it's really kind of impressive. So thank you guys. Hey, thanks. No uh, problem. Well, thank we just you. try to keep thank appreciate you so much. It. Try to say that, you know, the LRC, well, not try to, it is. It's as accurate as a seven to 10 day forecast, and you're forecasting three months to out. six, yeah. eight months in the it's future. It's nuts. And, and, and I got to believe there's meteorologists. Uh, uh, around the region listening, and they're writing all this down. This is a bunch of hogwash. They're well, writing they, it all down, they, then they're going to go. <laughs> Son of a gun. Crap, they're right again. <laughs> well, we're giving forecasts for July and August, and there's some people who aren't even quite sure if it's going to snow on Monday. Three days from now. Yeah, I know, exactly. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, uh, 701 293 If you could not get through, all my lines are open right now. Uh, we got a lot of emails to uh, get through here. Uh, first one, it says, uh, we are camping at Roy Lake State, State Park. That's about 25 miles west of Sisseton, South Dakota. Um, June 1st through the 7th. So a little bit west of Sisseton, South Dakota. Where is Sisseton? Uh, just, just across the North Dakota, South Dakota border. Just a straight shot south of here. Okay. Oh, I found it. 
So I just click what dates? Uh, June 1st through the 7th. Okay. On our global predictor, it has 75 on June 1st. It goes up to 79 on June 4th and wow. back to 77 on June 7th. So upper 70s. That's nice for early June. And it's got no rain on the 1st, the 3rd, and the 4th. It does have a chance of rain on the 2nd, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th. What kind of chance of rain? Does that have that on there or no? No, it just has yeah. amounts. 11 hundredths on the 2nd, 2 tenths off, and then about that much on the 6th and 7th. Okay. So maybe just a brief thunderstorm, and then the rest of the day is fine. Yeah. Well, looks good. So uh, there you go, Carmen. It looks pretty good for you. Um, let's see. Next one. Um, hold on here. Let's see. Um, April 12th, 12th-ish, are we looking at getting a blizzard slash rain event to coincide with January 13th and February 27th? Ooh. Wow, an LRC. Well, somebody that is really says somebody's us. keeping track. Steve is, well, they Steve, already know the answer. Steve needs a certificate wow. from you, Gary. <laughs> well, Steve already That's knows if he's following. Well, he's, he wants to see what you guys say. <laughs> well, I see if he's following yeah. properly. I think he's pretty spot so on. So what, what, what was the, he the said other dates? April, okay. Right around that April 12th date, are we looking at getting a blizzard slash rain, some kind of event that would coincide with what happened around January 13th and February 27th? Well, there will be. The question is, are we going to be warm enough where That's what he's asking, blizzard, snow. rain, or yeah. snow. So you're saying yes, there will be. Ooh, in that time frame, that was yeah. a really strong system, January 13th, wasn't it, guys? Mm -hmm. But it got phased into a storm in the east. Hmm. I'll let, I'll let Justin or Dean answer this one. Twelfth, boys. I'd say it's favor and rain myself. But there's something coming. Yeah. Oh, there'll be something there. Okay. There'll be a good amount of wind with it. But I, I think a couple of those blizzards were kicked up by. They were ground blizzards that were kicked up it, by a wind on the backside of these storms, and right. I don't think we're going to have blowable snow on the ground in the middle of April. No. So, uh, you know, it'll it'll probably be rain in spots probably to snow. our west and north. It'll mix with snow. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know if it'll be a blizzard. Okay. I think it'll just be a ick. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, uh. Todd's email. He's not going to like this answer. I can actually answer this one. Uh, great show. My daughter's getting married October 19th. Wondering what we can expect for weather that day. Thanks, Todd. I hate to break your heart, but that's under, that'll be under a new LRC, so we don't know, right? That'll be a new cycle. That that'll starts be a new out. cycle, wow. yeah. How about that? Give me a certificate. Um, <laughs> Jay. <laughs> we got uh, we to yeah. make him at least a guest one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honorary. Honorary, honorary. Honorary certificate. Honorary weather dude. Um, <laughs> all right, here we go. How's July 19th and 20th, uh, Jay? These are the dates for the Red River Garden Tour. I serve on the committee with Don Kinsler. So she's talking here locally, July 19th and 20th. 19th and 20th are fine. A couple days just after that, that's our Christmas storm that rolls okay. through. So, so it'll be likely good for the be garden a, tour. It'll probably be warm and humid. All right, there you go. Um, Let's see. Uh, sorry if I missed it, but how will it be traveling to the frozen face-off in St. Paul Friday morning and then returning to Fargo Sunday, Sunday, I'd say forget it. Well, well, you know, that's what we were saying earlier, but this storm is slowing down oh, and strengthening. Right. So yeah. Friday I, morning might be a little slick in spots yeah. as you had on 94. I mean, it's not going to be terrible. It's not going to be indrivable. No, you'll, you'll get there. Just it'll be snow. slow. Okay. Uh, coming back on Sunday, the timing of this storm is getting pushed back a little bit. Yeah, they're slowing it down right now. Yeah, is what it looks so like. I think you'll be okay leaving Sunday morning. You should be. But we were telling people, you know, you might want to leave Saturday night because uh, this storm system was going to shoot a wave out in advance of the main system. Now it looks like it's holding this whole system kind of together, and bam, we're going to get yeah, hit. Just, just keep up the, the forecast shot. from us over the next two days, and we'll, we'll let All you right. know. With got, more confidence on that timing. Um, I know I got full fold lines here, but I want to try to burn through some more of these emails, and we'll get back to the fold lines. And if lines. we don't answer the emails, just shoot yeah. them over to us, weather at flagfamily.com, and we'll answer them over the next week. Okay. Yeah. Wedding, Wapiton, September 14th. I think I got that email. Okay. Looks okay. Looks okay? Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Sunday, April 21st, down in Horace. What's the weather going to be like on Sunday, April 21st? That's oh, 
April twenty first. So the twenty first should be right before a storm system pulls in on the twenty third. So if it's off, if it if it rolls in a day or two early, mm-hmm. you're going to be on that iffy maybe line. But right now, it's favoring just after the twenty second through the twenty fourth in that time frame. And Friday the thirteenth of September, Wild Rice, Minnesota. And I think you said that September we, looks fine. September looks good. Yeah, thirteenth. All right, fine. there you go. Eighty two degrees. Eighty two degrees that day. Wow. Um. All right. Let's get back to the phones here. Mike in Fargo, you're up. Jay Thomas show weather special. Go ahead. All right, State A Boys Golf, June fourth and fifth in Grand Forks. Oh, ooh, that's June a when that, uh, fourth and fifth. That's a big event. Should be fine. Should be good. Should be good, and temperatures how, should be around eighty degrees. How's the wind? Oh yeah, golf players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the wind will start kicking up on the fifth. It looks like the fifth or the sixth. The wind will start kicking up. Nothing terrible, yeah, but you know, an average wind up here. A low of 57 that day and a high of 79, like Justin said. And sunshine? There might be a few a few shower storms in the area, but... There you go, Mike. Yeah. Looks good for you. Uh, 701-293-9000. Got an open line. Tom, you're next. Jay Thomas Show. Yeah, looking about uh, August 9th. We got a wedding in Fargo. Wedding in I'll Fargo, August 9th. August is the eighth month, right? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Take the, you know, and, you, and you gave this guy an LRC a certificate. Yeah. That is about. I know. That's about the time frame Uh-oh. of. Uh, th- that would be the time frame of a st- very stormy period from the sixth through the tenth of August. That was August. He Lovely. said. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It does. Yeah. Uh, here's here's what the actual day by day has it has 57 hundredths of an inch of rain so pretty significant on the 7th 36 hundredths on the 8th 12 hundredths on the 9th and then nothing on the 10th so maybe that'll slide by a day and it'll be okay for right. that for that but a, a high of a pretty warm a high of i don't know what you guys have but it shows 89 on here Ooh. yeah yeah wow okay all Th- right thank you thanks you tom appreciate it yeah. leroy you're up jay thomas show yeah, so I'm wondering about June 15, 16 in Des Moines, Iowa. June 15 and 16, Des Moines, Iowa. Let's, uh, I see Gary Hart at work there on the global thing, the thingamabobby. <laughs> the global predictor. The global predictor. There the we go. The global thingamabobby. He's, 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 88 he's, degrees. 88 degrees on June 15th in Des Moines. I just clicked on Des Moines. The low temperature, 66. And again, there's no chance of snow. <laughs> okay, well, thank ideal. God. That's ideal. <laughs> so, is there no precip then? Does that mean there's no precip then? It does, is it the fifteenth? Fifteenth and sixteenth of June, yeah. Yeah, it has it has no rain on the fifteenth right now. No rain. No rain, Leroy, and uh, almost ninety. That's ideal. Racing time. Oh, there you go. Yes, definitely. Thanks, Leroy. I appreciate it, brother. Carol, you're next. Jay Thomas show. What's your uh, what's your uh, what's your date? June seventh, nineteen. I mean twenty twenty four in Nisswa, Minnesota. Uh, all right. Uh, so just 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 a little bit east of here. Yeah, over in. Hold on, we're checking. And this year, make sure it's this year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. June seventh in Nisswa, Minnesota, God's country. Hold on, they're looking. Gary's going to get there a lot faster than I am. June 7th. Let's see here. There's the doggie. And let's switch this back to Minnesota. Hold on. They're getting June it, Carol. 7th. Gary can just touch. I got to type it all in. Oh, you got to type it all in? I got to type it in. Gary can just touch it. Gary didn't give me the act. Well, he did, but I don't have it open. Oh. Oh, I can't get it open. Okay. That's that's the issue. You're an LRC. You're an LRC certified meteorologist. You just have to ask, and you get access. All right. Where is it? Where, where Cass, N- Cass County, Nisswa, Minnesota. Yeah, Cass County, Minnesota. Oh, it's. Okay. Let's go over here. And what's the date? June seventh. And we're loading it up. Okay. A lot of June dates. And it. What do you guys think? I. This system says 80 degrees. What did your what does the dashboard say? Uh, 
and it does have a tenth of an inch of rain that day. So, so that, on the seventh of June, it is looking like it'll be just about seventy-five on the dashboard. Okay. For Cass County, not specifically yeah. Nisswa, yeah. and the chance of rain looks low. Low. All right. Low chance of rain and in the yeah, 70s, Carol. All right. That's this was slight chance you. of rain. No problem. Thank you. Appreciate it. WDY time 428. Mark, hang on. Ed, hang on. Steve, hang on. And uh, all you emailers, we're going to try to get to all you as well. 701 293 9000. Email is studio at WDAYradionow.com. It is our spring summer LRC Weather Outlook 2024 brought to you by Jiffy Lube Fargo, Plains Ag, and the Money Farm. More with Gary and Dean and Justin and uh, your calls and emails when we come back. Jay Thomas Show. In the dynamic world of grain farming, your friends at The Money Farm know every decision impacts your journey to profitability. The Money Farm offers commodity advisory services across the ag industry and works with producers across the U.S. on grain marketing strategies. You've spent years maximizing your production. Now it's time to maximize your marketing. If you have any questions on current markets or are looking for grain marketing advice, contact The Money Farm online at themoneyfarm.com. March into Luther Family Buick GMC for spectacular savings on our entire inventory. Explore over 200 new Buicks and GMCs, including enclaves and visions in the all-new Buick and Vista. Discover rock-bottom prices on new GMC Acadias, Terrains, and the smoking hot Sierra in colors and trim to suit you and your pocketbook. Interest rates as low as 0.9%. It's the perfect time to join our family. Hurry in to Luther Family Buick GMC, corner of I-29 and 32nd Avenue South. We are professional grade. You expect your home to protect everything you love, but you don't expect that water is the reason parts of your concrete have gotten so uneven. Walkway tripping hazards, sinking pool deck, cracked driveways are dangerous threats to everyone's safety. But there's one way to learn how your concrete can be lifted. A free home inspection from Innovative Basement Authority. We put water back in its place. Go to InnovativeBasementAuthority.com. License number C139366BC765730. Hi, I'm Bob from Lakeland General Store, and we are stocked up with Flow Docks and Lifts. Stop by and let me show you why Flow products are renowned for quality and innovation. They feature an easy level system that makes raising and lowering a breeze, plus effortless install and removal. Looking for flexible payment options? We've got you covered with great financing options on dock and lift purchases. If you're in the market for a new dock or lift, come see me at Lakeland General Store, just south of the Detroit Lakes on Highway 59. Attention farmers, are unexpected breakdowns leaving you stranded in the field? Don't let downtime hinder your harvest. Advanced Diesel Repair is your trusted partner in getting you back in action fast. Their technicians specialize in swift diagnostics and top-notch repairs, ensuring your diesel equipment is up and running in no time. With Advanced Diesel Repair, you can count on reliable service and minimal disruptions to your farming operation. Advanced Diesel Repair, conveniently located off the I-94 Wild Rice exit and online at ADRofHorace.com. Attention experienced senior level techs with five years of experience. Northern Plains Equipment, a certified Case IH dealer in Minot, North Dakota, is looking for you. Join the team and perform quality maintenance and repairs on all types of agricultural equipment. Northern Plains Equipment is a value-led, 100% employee-owned company, offering competitive wages, benefits, and job training. If you're ready to work in a great environment with great people, apply at plainsag.com. Northern Plains Equipment, Inc., proud to be an equal opportunity employer. It's Big Game, James McCarty. And Jay Stenman. And you know what? There's no better place to watch the NCAA tournament games than at Sweet Shots. We will be there live for the first day of the tourney, March 21st. Join us from 11 to 1 inside DJ's Lounge. You can enjoy a $12 lunch combo and a bucket of high noon for 20 bucks while watching all the games. Or you can order a bunch of tasty wings and your favorite beverage. With a TV at every bay, you can watch the games and hit balls all day long. Join us Thursday from 11 to 1 at DJ's Lounge inside Sweet Shots in Fargo. This check on the weather is brought to you by North Star Plumbing and Drain Cleaning, your local homegrown Fargo guys. Find them online at NorthStarPlumbingND.com. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. 
The West Fargo City Commission has voted 3-2 to two against using city-owned land to allow for the construction of a turn lane into the Shea West Garden Center. That's something the business owners have been pushing for. City Commissioner Mandy George. We have a capital improvement um, economic or economic development fund, which has been voted on by the public for um, money to help small businesses specifically. We have funds available for this. And so it, it's just this, this is a perfect situation where that money could be used to help them. George says the city needs to back small business. She calls the situation, quote, super frustrating. A proposal that would raise the minimum wage in Minnesota to $15 an hour is advancing in the state Senate. The Labor Committee passed the measure yesterday, allowing it to be part of a larger employment bill that will be considered later in the session. The proposal would raise the minimum wage for all businesses to $15 an hour this year and mandate a $1.25 increase each year after that. The rate would reach $20 an hour in 2028. The state's current minimum wage for large businesses is $10.85, while the minimum for small businesses is $8.85. The Minnesota Twins' home opener April 4th will include a tribute to the two police officers and firefighter paramedics shot and killed while responding to a domestic call in Burnsville last month. The Twins say there will be a special starting lineup, including first responders from Burnsville and Dakota County. Also featured a bagpipe performance and a military flyover before the game. And Senator John Hoven is commenting on the fate of the wild horses in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. He says based on support from Congress and ongoing negotiations, he believes the park will keep the horses. However, Hoven says if that isn't the case, he's behind legislation that would keep the animals where they are by prohibiting the park from using funding that would go toward removing the horses. A final decision on the matter is expected next month. Tom Tucker, WDAY, and WDAYRadioNow.com. More of the Jay Thomas Show coming up. Partly cloudy skies will go mainly cloudy as we head throughout this evening into tonight with a north wind between 10 and 20 miles per hour, lightening up as it switches out of the east-southeast between 5 and 10 miles per hour. We'll drop down to a low in the upper teens and warm back to the lower and mid-30s on Thursday. It's mainly cloudy, a little light snow out west with light wind. A better chance for light and moderate snow comes through Thursday night, exiting Friday morning with 1 to 3 inches of accumulation in higher amounts of the southwest. From the WDAY Skywatch Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Justin Storm. Give the star in your life the brightest gift in the world. Name a star after them. This is Rocky Moselle with International Star Registry. For $59 and a call to 800-282-3333 or visit starregistry.com, you can name a star for birthdays, weddings, or even memorials. Over 45 years, we have named millions of stars for celebrities and individuals from around the world. The star you name will be recorded in book form in the U.S. Copyright Office. Visit starregistry.com or call 800-282-3333. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards, rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. Are you the type of person who loves new adventures, experiences, and surroundings? We can help. Hi, Nancy Kelly from Labor Masters. We're locally owned day labor experts, and we've got three shifts daily, so you can come in, go to work, and get paid the same day. No two days are ever the same. Embrace the variety. Contact us at labormasters.net. That's labormasters.net. Join us for a world of opportunities. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Attention motivated individuals. Plains Grain and Agronomy is seeking a precision ag service technician to join the team. If you're passionate about agriculture and thrive in a hands-on role, this is your opportunity. From running parts counter to providing technical support, your skills will make a difference. 
Apply today and become part of Plains Grain and Agronomy's dynamic team. Visit plainsgrain.com for details. That's plainsgrain.com. When it comes to keeping your auto ready for action, Jiffy Lube of Fargo is the team to be. The Jiffy Lube Signature Service helps your auto fire on all cylinders like an all-star. With a comprehensive preventative maintenance to check, change, inspect, and fill essential systems. Keeping your vehicle game ready for trips across town or across the country. Jiffy Lube of Fargo, locally owned and operated with three Fargo locations for speed and convenience and no appointment needed. Today's J. Thomas show is brought to you by United Automotive Tech Center. They do everything. Bob Seeger. Ah, yes. Against the wind. I thought maybe you'd do uh, the wind cries Mary. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. There's still time. Yeah, four thirty eight. Jay Thomas show our uh, spring summer weather outlook twenty twenty. Um, brought to you by Jiffy Lube Fargo Plains Ag and also uh, the Money Farm. And a big thank you to uh, uh, Weather Twenty Twenty dot com uh, CEO Gary Lezak and uh, uh, Lezak and founder of the LRC is with us. Um, let's see. We have got a lot to get to, but before we get back to the calls and the emails. Brand new place in West Fargo. Alex and I got to check it out. Dean, you checked it out as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is fantastic. The Noble Hair Bourbon and Wine Bar. It's on Cheyenne Street in Old Town, West Fargo, right by the POW MIA Plaza. Atmosphere is great. It is, um, it's an amazing place. What they've done in there, it's just wow. Jaw-dropping, great-looking, relaxing. Uh, Hang out with your friends, have a unique beverage. Um... It's one cool. of those places where you just take your phone and go, you know what, I don't need the phone. Don't. It reminds me of, the, uh, of a cigar bar with mm. the couches and just yeah. relaxing, quiet atmosphere without the smoke. If you love the it's old great. JT Cigaros, it's that atmosphere in there. Uh, more than 140 different kinds of bourbon. Wow. More than 16 handcrafted cocktails to choose from. Huge selection of wine. We're talking top-notch wine. And if you get a little hungry, desserts from one of the greatest places in the metro, Nicole's Fine Pastry. Holy smokes, man. Noble Hair Cheyenne, downtown West Fargo. Uh, open Tuesday through Sunday and also available for private events on Monday. All right, boys, let's get back to it. Mark's been waiting the longest. Mark, you're up, Jay Thomas Show. Hey, Jay, how's it going? Hey, going good. I'm, I'm, I'm just about ready to go into vacation mode here, brother. <laughs> Are you are you flying out of Fargo? Always do. Yep. Yeah. See, these little minions don't have Jay Thomas money. We're flying out of the Twin Cities Wednesday morning. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good to be the king. No. <laughs> uh, so um, we're leaving Tuesday at about five p.m. out of Fargo. So we'll be heading down nine ninety four. What Ooh. kind of weather are we looking at? It will clean up. Clean yeah. up, yeah, clean up the weather. Clean up from one to two feet of snow. Yeah, you're going to have a tough time uh, once you get towards the cities. Um, they might wrap in enough warm air that that after the snow it turns to rain for them. But yeah, it's going to be a mess going down. Even on Tuesday, it'll be a mess going down 94. Hey, listen, Mark, why don't you man up, get that pedicure, and spend some of that money and fly out of Fargo, buddy? <laughs> 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 Where are you going? What? Just down to the. Um, we're actually going to Florida. Where? We are going just uh, Boynton Beach, just south of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, okay, we're down to St. Pete's Beach, so you're a little bit farther south than us. Nice, nice. Well, going down for a week. So just, cool. So just slow go then, pretty much for us. Yeah, quite slow. Um, I, I, I would. Man, I don't know if they'll have it close. Cl- there could it, be some point where 94 is closed. It, it, if we it get, very well could be yeah, closed so in the spots. It's, it, might be, it might be touch and go even Tuesday morning. Hey, listen, buddy. Why don't you take some of that liquor money you tucked away for the trip and use that and fly out of Fargo? <laughs> 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 there you go. Have fun down there, Mark. Appreciate it. Ed and Fargo, you're up, Jay Thomas Show. How's it going, boys? Hey, Good. what's up, buddy? 10, 11 May, Baudette, Minnesota. Oh, up on the border. Baudette, Minnesota. Would you say May what? 
Ten eleven. Ten and eleven. Justin, what do you got? Uh, where is Bod at, at again? Bod where's Dennis? Near? The border. Up on well, the Canadian border. There's a lot of border. <laughs> I don't know where Bod at is. Uh, what I'm county sorry. is that? I don't. I just need a near another uh, city. Fine Lake of the Woods. Yeah, Lake of the Woods. There awesome. you go. Good. Thank you. There we go. May. You said tenth, eleventh. Yep. Uh, it looks wind, like it'll be warming in the upper sixties to near seventy degrees. Um, and wind. Looks like there's a, a, a little bit of light. It looks like there's a little rain on the ninth and tenth. What about wind? What about wind? Wind, wind. Uh, you must be doing some fishing up there. Roger that, buddy. Yeah, as soon as wall, it'll, it'll probably be a bit, a, a, a bit on the breezy side, man. On the breezy side, Ed. All right, that's not so great, but okay. Now go have fun anyway. Yep. Open, that's, open, that's open waters. waters. Still have beer up. There, I was gonna so. say that's that's <laughs> what that's what beer's for, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Appreciate yes, they it. They still serve beer in Canada. Yeah, yes, they do. Wilson. Uh Steve, you're up on a Jay Thomas show. Yeah, what's the nastiest time between May and September? Biggest storm, hail, lightning, the whole works. Which weekend? For which day? In Nashville? Wow. Where? In where, Nashville? Where was he talking? Was he talking about here in Fargo? Where, Steve? Yeah, yeah, in Fargo. In Fargo. Oh. Oh, you know. There's a few of them. Ah, there are a few of them. Well, I'd either say that one in late June or early August. Late June or early August. One of those two, Steve. Good, thanks. You got it, brother. Dave, you're up on the Jay Thomas Show. Yeah, I was just wondering about the Corn Belt. They t- keep talking about this major drought coming. Is that going to happen or not? What part of the Corn Belt? The reason, yeah, yeah. the, the, the reason think. they're thinking about that. Sorry, sorry, guys. Um, the reason I'm thinking about the the corn belt having a major drought is because the switch to La Nina. All right. So when in typical La Ninas, it could it could result in something like that, and that's maybe forty percent of them. Now let me just tell you, the LRC what we're using here to make you these forecasts. So there's La Nina going to be growing by September, October, November on the right. You see all that blue water. That's cooler water, mm-hmm. cooling of the tropical Pacific Ocean. But for for the Corn Belt, I, I just don't see it. The drought right now, if you look at our drought monitor, it's not expanding. You know, there's a there's an area of concern in Iowa, and the next two weeks are important. Monitor Iowa closely because if Iowa gets two, three, four inches of rain and some snow on top of that then the soil moisture is going to improve significantly and the drought's going to be shrinking. So right now we're seeing the shrinking drought and not these other reports that you're seeing at this moment. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. I like, like this uh, message I got from Steve. I know forecasting is getting better, but it would be nice if you would go back and look at what was said today and then keep track of the actual weather for the next six months and see how it uh, how accurate the LRC actually is. Steve, I've done that ever since yep. they started doing this LRC thing, and it's almost dead on the money. So I've, I've been doing that myself, and it's unbelievable. And it goes, he goes on, I predict it's going to rain a lot here in Florida next Friday and Saturday. I don't care about next Friday or Saturday. I'm gone. I care about this week while I'm or this coming week. I think maybe he was talking about this, <laughs> this Friday, Saturday, when well, it's we, supposed to rain. <laughs> we know it's going to rain Friday. If Saturday now, it looks like it's going to be pretty nice on Saturday. Well, cool yeah. for Florida standards. Well, but, for Florida standards, yeah. yeah. But the rest of it's going to be beautiful down there. It's 26 here. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to Betty. Betty, you're up on a Jay Thomas show. Hi, Jay. Hey. Um, we're heading down to Wisconsin next Friday, the 29th, and heading to Washington, D.C. first week in April. What's the weather like going to um, Wisconsin next Friday? Wisconsin next Friday. Yeah, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, they're all looking it up for you right now. Awesome. Yeah, we're all at this next Friday. So not this Friday. 29th. You're talking the 29th. Okay. Yeah. It, there's a storm approaching Thursday. You see that little system, guys, coming yep. towards there Thursday yep. night and Friday? Yeah, I see it coming in on Friday, but it looks like it. But, you should be fine. It'd be rain. Yeah, Wisconsin's oh, okay. ahead of that storm, so it's not till Friday night. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, we'll be there in the afternoon. It'll be fine. So then. what about like Washington D.C. then the first week in April? Let's like sure. Roddy said We're earlier, driving. like Roddy said earlier, it's going to be a little swampy. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I hope not. Uh, it's got 60s, 60s, 60s uh, for high temperatures, low temperatures in the 40s, and it has rain on the 4th and rain on the 9th, but dry the other days. Great, because we'll probably leave Washington, D.C. on the 4th, and then we're going to go up to Maine and New York and around the bend again. So we'll just catch you on the other side. Thanks, Betty. Appreciate it. Chris, West Fargo, Jay Thomas Show. Hi. Hi. I'm looking for weather for June 1, right in West Fargo here. June 1? What's going on in my, what's going on in my town on the 1st? A graduation party for my grandson. Oh, yeah, that's right, graduation You're welcome time. to come on over. Oh, we've got lots of Miller J. Lives. I'll be there. June first. Uh, June first looks nice. Uh, nice. Looks nice. Dry yeah. upper seventies. Yeah. Maybe a little rain coming in shortly after that. So. So yeah, dry upper seventies. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Chris. Appreciate it. If we don't get to all the emails, we'll just the guys will re, they'll re, like I got Roxanne, Don, Kenny, Nicole, Daryl, Christopher, Blaze. Uh, Jeff, Nate, uh, Carmen. If we don't yeah. get to all these, the guys will respond to you. We they'll will. they'll email get, you. Give back. us a, give us yeah. about a week. It's, you, yeah. After the program, send them to weather at flagfamily dot com versus just studio. Forward. Forward. You'll, forward. you'll forward I, I, these. I won't. Dean will forward all these. I'm out of oh, here, thanks. man. <laughs> thanks, Dean. <laughs> all right. What's the next one? All right. Um. Let's go to Ron up in Pembina. Ron J. Thomas Show. Hey, hello, and thanks for taking my call. Hey, buddy. Yeah, two different dates and two locations. The second weekend in June for Bismarck, Mandan area, and the third weekend in June for Minneapolis, St. Paul. All right, let's see. You know what I'm looking for. I know exactly. weather. Yeah, it's exactly what you're looking for. You said the second week of June for Bismarck? Yeah, second weekend, yeah. Oh, second weekend. So, like, the... the, Yeah. The 7th, 8th, or the 4th, or the, sorry, the 8th and 9th, or the 15th and 16th? No, 8th and 9th and the 15th and 16th for Minneapolis-St. Paul area. Uh, low 70s on the 8th and 9th out in Bismarck for June. Uh, looks like a possibility of rain on the 7th and 8th. Well, 6th, 7th, and 8th. So your Sunday looks fine. Might you have a little rain on okay. 8th. And then the Minneapolis that following weekend? Yes. That's right. Mid-80s. Oh, Okay, that's not bad. No chance of snow. <laughs> no chance of snow, <laughs> mid 80s. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, it, it, the it, finest it, air shows in America, so it, that's why I want to know. And I thank sh- you very much. Should be dry, too. Should be dry, too, for you, Ron. Okay. Looks dry. Thanks, Thanks brother. Appreciate it. Uh, 450. Holy smokes. Uh, Man, where did they go? Susan, J. Thomas Show. Hi. Um, how about Apache, Apache Junction, Arizona, April 4th, 5th, and 6th? A batchy Joe oh, Dean. AJ. All right. Going down to AJ, where, huh? Yeah. Where where is that? In uh, just out, just outside of Phoenix. East okay. East East Valley. Oh. Okay, I can go zoom right in here on our global predictor. This product will be out for all of you guys here in about one month. But let me look here. So there we are, East Phoenix area. Oh, I see it. There it is. It has on uh, what dates? Uh the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Of Thursday of April, sorry. April. Two weeks. Of April. Okay, this has 82, 81, and 81 for highs and lows in the upper 50s to near 60 and dry. There you go. Perfect. I'm wearing shorts. There you go. I, <laughs> right. Listen, I'm already wearing my Speedo for Florida. I got it on right now. Oh, please, <laughs> man. Thanks, oh. Susan. Appreciate it. Uh, Tim, you're up. Jay Thomas show. Yeah, I'm wondering. Uh, I was, we're scheduled to have the funeral for my father with visitation this coming Monday, funeral Tuesday morning. Uh, Fargo, Aberdeen area. Um, people coming in from Iowa, and Nebraska, driving, flying Oof. into a variety of places. Uh, what Tim, do we got? To him, yeah, Tim, it's this is not, not good. Not looking good. Now, uh, Monday, you said the, the, the services are Monday or Tuesday? 
Uh, well, the visitation is Monday night. It's going to be – man, it's, it's, it's going to be tough getting in here from Aberdeen. It will from all angles. It's, it's going to be tough getting in here. Um, okay. Tuesday will kind of be cleanup day, uh, but it, I think it's still going to be – the roads are still going to be pretty slick on Tuesday. Yeah, there's still going to be a little yeah. blowing and drifting snow. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, Tim. Sorry, Tim. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. That's, uh, of course, Tim, Tim Flackle, Flackle. Yeah. filling in, uh, fill in for me while I'm gone some of the days. Um, Who's been waiting the longest here? We're running out of time. we got to go quick. Judy, you're up. Jay Thomas Show. Yeah. Um, I want to go and see my grandson, and he, they live in uh, northeast Iowa. Do you know what the weather uh, for the summer will be up in northeast Iowa between June and uh, probably August? Uh. Do you have? Can you send us an email? That might take a bit of time. We're down to about five minutes of the show left. Uh, I don't know how to do it. But uh, I can over, have that. Over, doing over, it. overall, um, temp in Ju- June through what? August. 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 Uh, it, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be a pretty it's gonna be a pretty hot summer down there. Uh, they've been really Ooh. they're in drought conditions right now. But uh, 80, again, that, 80s for June, 80s for July. You, you're stuck in the 80s all summer. And, uh, yeah. yeah, more oh, than likely. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Judy. Appreciate it. Buffy, J. Thomas Show. Hey, do you know the for August 30 through September 2nd in Duluth? Duluth, Duluth Minnesota. Duluth. Yeah, let's take a look here. Yep. Well, they're you looking it up. August for you. into September. End of August, first part yeah. of September. All right. Well, mid seventies, end of August to near eighty. Upper seventies, near eighty, the first week of September. Uh, and that matches that's the my, global predictor too. Yep, that's not bad. And let's check a precip. Precip end of August looks dry for them. Pretty dry, and the. You start seeing an increase in First, second, of and third of September are dry. Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the fifth and sixth, mm-hmm. a chance of rain. Looks pretty good for you, Buffy. Uh-huh. Perfect hiking weather. Thank you. There yeah. you go. Um, That's beautiful hiking up there, too. Hey, Petro Serve March specials continue. Old Trapper 10 ounce, uh, just twelve ninety nine. Eight ounce Red Bull, three for six fifty. Sixteen 16 ounce Red Bull, two for $7. Don't forget Girl Scout Cookie Bites, four ninety nine. Two pack electronic lighters, just 99 cents. And any size fountain. Or coffee or cappuccino, just 89 cents. Petrol Serve USA, helping America fuel better. They keep my ride truck fueled up, and there's one near you. And again, thank you to our sponsors, Jiffy Lube of Fargo, Plains Ag, and of course, the Money Farm, and of course, the the one and only, the world-famous CEO of Weather2020.com, founder of the LRC, Gary Lezak, and of course our meteorologist Thank here. Thank you, Jay. Guys, I, I know we got callers waiting, but we are we are basically yep. yeah we're out of time. Uh, we've and, got a hard break where we have to get to the and, news and, here. And again, if anybody's interested in Gary's products, uh, weather twenty twenty dot com or email Bryce B R Y C E at weather twenty twenty dot com. You can also email us. We'll get you. You in can email us as well. Them. Weather at flagfamily dot com. Yeah. We'll we'll get it. We'll get her done for you. Okay. Um, Enjoy the snow, everybody. Oh, I can't wait. Gary. Oh yeah, I can't. I'm, wait. I'm, I'm on a plane. I'm already on that plane right now, dude. <laughs> I'm already on it. So From Fargo I, again. All you folks that have emailed, we didn't get your emails. These are all going to get forwarded to the weather team, and then they will personally respond to all your emails with the information. It might take yeah. a week or so. Yeah, just be patient. We had like 300 last time. Well, that, and crazy. we've got a big storm coming we got to yeah. take care yeah. of first. Yeah. So they will get you. We tried to get to everything, but it was just, it was just too impossible. All right, everybody, have a great uh, – enjoy the snowstorm. I'm out of here. Alex yeah. and I are on our way to Florida. <laughs> got great people filling in. Jason Berg will be in. Tim Flackle will be in. I don't know who else Ronnie's got lined up, but we got you covered for the week. Your news is coming up next.